is you ready for? Cause I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. You ain't ready for no war, boy. You can't even flip through your sword, boy. Let me see. Your sword is dull, boy. It's time to sharpen that sword up. Time to set your house in order. You see the time getting shorter. Now we're scared for a boy. Lock in the Israel night dot or boy. First thing first, get rid of that NIV. Come about the church full of LIEs. What I'm about to show you gon' set you free. John 832, cry loud when you read. See the law is the truth, guarantee you gon' learn today. To these lying ass bastards say they done away. Heaven and earth ain't passed cause they here to stay. You gon' feel the Lord's wrath, you don't obey. Wait, hold your peace, all things done in order. I'ma get to your question. No more transgression. Christ coming back with a lot of aggression. We under oppression. We broke God's law, so he's teaching us a lesson. You can find out the word of God is a weapon. Only 12 tribes written on the gates of heaven. Now is you ready for war? You should be ready for war. You should be ready for war. I help you sharpen that sword. I help you sharpen that sword.
Pressure make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. I'ma turn up to the match. You don't wanna mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. We ain't come back, but you have it. Deal with the Bible, no magic. Walking on water, not magic. A pressure make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. I'ma turn up to the match. You don't wanna mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. We ain't come back, but you have it. Deal with the Bible, no magic. Walking on water, not magic. Keep my faith in God, knowing he gon' make a way. Focus on my goal, let them other niggas hate. Blood, sweat, and tears, some of y'all can relate. Man, through the struggle, I'ma swim through the lake. I look at this in the water, swimming out faith. Muhammad Ali, I'ma be one of the greats. Reading the script, trying to be like King David. The greatest was a black man, God is racist. Adam from the dirt, let's stick to the faces. Can't be late, MOV, I'm racing. The rock hit them up, let them know we gon' make it. Well, hell hit them up, let them know we gon' make it. I'ma turn up, pull nets in line. Hit up a car, he don't really waste time. Meditating daily, I'ma change my mind. Meditating daily, I can't waste time. Run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up. Hitting the scripture, we turn up. Spitting the truth, we turning up. Hitting the block, we turn up. Mind the dangerous tool. Loaded with knowledge, we blasting these fools. Twelve in the clip, watching them move. It can get violent, I'm pretty of these fools. A pressure make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. I'ma turn up to the match. You don't wanna mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. We ain't come back, but you have it. Deal with the Bible, no magic. Walking on water, not magic. 
A pressure make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. I'ma turn up to the max. You don't wanna mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. We ain't come back, but you have it. Deal with the vibe and no magic. Walking on water, not magic. Give me what you got, and I ain't talking about the pocket where the guy coming out. We gon' stop it. Killers and dealers, y'all thinking y'all real. Stare him in the place, nigga, you ain't no killer. Gorilla, rolling with my hands in the field. Keeping it real, we ain't about to tell a lie. I ain't trying to die while your ass in the fight. Trying tribulations, I been going through the fire. Purging my sins, I don't want to inspire. Liar, liar, your pants is on fire. Meet you some more, but your ass can't buy it. We gon' shut the door with a head honcho. Turn it up a notch while me spitting the fire. Proverbs 122, trying to say goodbye. You ain't wanna listen when I talked about God. Now it's time to die, it's your light on the rise. Run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up. Hitting the scriptures, we turn up. Spitting the truth, we turn up. Hitting the block, we turn up. Mind the dangerous tool. Loaded with knives, we blasting these fools. Swerving the clip, watching them move. It can get violent, don't pity these fools. Oppression make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. I'ma turn up to the mad. You don't wanna mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. We ain't come back, but you have it. Deal with the Bible, no magic. No magic. Walking on water, not magic. Yeah. A pressure make a wise man mad. Some of y'all out here glad. Yeah. I'ma turn up to the max. You don't want to mess with my daddy. Christ, big brother, a savage. Yeah. We ain't come back, but you have it. Fly. Deal with the Bible, no magic. No magic. Walking on water, not magic. Yeah. It's just different. Christ like that's what it do. Christians got a phrase. What would 
Jesus do. Fear God obeys law. That's the whole duty. True. Now how you love God? John 14, 21. That's the least you can do for him. Salute! Salute down. Face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpets down. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters have gone up over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath, who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Heavenly Father, the God of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come through the end of the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, Father God, on your high holy Sabbath day. We give you all glory, Father God, to your son, Jesus the Christ, Father God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for what you've done, for what you're doing in the nation of Israel, Father God. We pray for each in every brother, each and every sister. We pray, Father God, for those who are pushing the, your word in the front line. Those brothers, Father God, who are continue to push your word day in, day out. It doesn't matter what weather, Father God. We pray for these men that you send your angels to protect them. Let no harm come to your prophets. Let no harm come to your servant, Father God. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Father God, you bless us. In these last days, we pray, Father God, for those who are sick, especially during this coronavirus stuff, Father God. A lot of our people is dying from this thing. But, Father God, we ask you, Father God, you protect us, you strengthen us, you increase our faith in this difficult moment. We also pray for the sisters who are pregnant with child, Father God, that you bless them. Father God, we thank you. Strengthen our spirit, Father God. Help us to endure to the end, Father God, and help us to overcome. We also ask you, Father God, that you bring judgment against those who hate us, who hate your people, those who don't want to see us succeed, those who don't want to see us rise, Father God, as the Israelite, as the sons and daughters of the living God, we pray, Father God, you bring destruction right to their doorstep. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We also thank you. We pray for our food and our strong drink. It's the name of you, son Jesus. Let all say, Hallelujah! 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 He said in the name of your son, Jesus, the cross, we and thank thee. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hang, salute. Salute down. Face sisters to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. All right, brothers and sisters, have a seat, have a seat. Your brothers online, sisters online. I pray you guys have uh, enjoyed the Sabbath. Uh, we're getting ready. Uh, brothers and sisters, put your phone in mute, please. Uh, brothers and sisters, you need a Bible. You need an apocrypha. You need a pen. And you need paper. This is a learning environment this is not a hangout you online too keep that in mind 
take notes, take good notes. Take good notes that when you go back home, so you can use these scriptures to build yourself up. This is what it's about. About building yourself up. Be better than they think you are. That's what this is about. As we're getting ready for bishop class, bishop going back to bring the fire. Learn what, learn what he's bringing and take good notes. Bishop, you ready? No. Oh, you're not ready? No. All right. If you don't have an apocrypha, we have extra one. We can provide one for you. We, we can loan it to you and make sure you return it so somebody else may use it again next time. All right? So, as a matter of fact, the, those little apocrypha, they're not, they're, not, they're not that expensive. They're like, what, 5 $6 on Amazon, so you can get one. But if you don't have one right now, put your hands up. Security is going to bring, bring one to you. Put your hands up. Who doesn't have an apocrypha? Security, the blood right there. Can you bring bring him an apocrypha, please? Uh, any sisters? Every sister have an apocrypha? Okay. I don't see no sister's hands up. The sister got it. Hey, uh, they, security, there's a sister right there too that have no apocrypha also. Huh? Oh, head cover too. Also, we need a sister. Sisters, please. The sister here needs a head covering. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Brothers, how y'all doing the Sabbath day? Good. Sisters, how y'all doing? Good. All praises. All praises. Today we're going to discuss Jacob's trouble. We're going to discuss Jacob's trouble. You know, about five years ago, uh, when I was in Jamaica, we were, I was asked about were we in Jacob's trouble? I said no. And because about five, six, seven years ago, there was really not too much going on. And an idiot bum camp decides to do video after video saying that I don't believe the scriptures where it talks about Jacob's trouble and Jeremiah. You can't make this stuff up. So as of late, there's been a rise in sickness, disease, economic failure, and in wars. I want to open up with Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Who's reading for me? Also oh, Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah. You sure? Okay, good. You all right, Nichemiah? <laughs> Go ahead, Nichemiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So we're going to discuss today Jacob's trouble is great tribulation. Jacob's trouble is great tribulation. From there, go to Revelation 7 and verse 14. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, uh, he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. If you notice, the two verses are saying the same thing that we just read. Jacob's trouble is the great tribulation that we read about. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30. When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee. Mm -hmm. Even in the latter days. I want you to see that part right there. So Moses spoke prophetically about the great tribulation being in the latter days. Read it again. When thou art in tribulation. And all these things are come upon thee. Even in the latter days. If thou turn to the Lord thy God. And shall be obedient unto his voice. All right, from right there, give me Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Daniel 12 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince 
which standeth for the children for the children of thy people. Michael is one of the archangels. He's not. This is not talking about Christ like this simple, Je uh, not Jehovah Witness. What do they call Seventh Day Disadvantage? Say this is actual Michael Archangel. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So this time of trouble, you say that, and there shall be such a time of trouble. That's saying the same thing Jeremiah 30 verse 7 says. It's saying the same thing Revelation 7 14 said, where it used the word tribulation, Deuteronomy 4.30. They're all saying the same thing, and it's promising that the people of the Lord shall be delivered. Give me Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 28, <clears throat> verse 8. Mm -hmm. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So Jeremiah the prophet prophesied as well of, um, what did it say, great of war, evil, and pestilence. Write that down. War, evil, and pestilence. I need, I need you to get your pens, pens and paper and take good notes on this spot right here. Take good notes on what I'm about to go over now. So what does Jacob's trouble, which is great tribulation, consist of? Let's go to Ezekiel 14 and verse 21. I sound like I'm losing my voice. Ezekiel 14. And verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 21. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. So next to um, Jacob's trouble is great tribulation. Next to Ezekiel 14, 21 in your notebook. Write down those four words, F sword, famine, noisome beast, and pestilence. I want to highlight noisome beast just for this moment here. Go, let's go to Deuteronomy 32 and verse 21 about the noisome beast. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. Mm -hmm. They have moved me to jealousy, which... With that which is not God. 24. Deuteronomy 32 verse 24. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 24. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beast upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. So this is what the Lord had told Moses to prophesy to the children of Israel. That if we send one of the curses here would also be we would be torn to pieces by the teeth of beasts and poisonous serpents of the dust. Uh, Officer Alicia, put up for me the, um, the wild beasts. Put them up on the screen. Yes, the us. Wait, wait. Yes, yeah, start there at the top. Top left. Yes, yeah, start with that one. This is what the scripture is making reference to. He will send the teeth. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. So as y'all can see during the time of chattel slavery, they used these uh, wild bred dogs against us. Give me the next one. Blow it up a little bigger than that. Here we go again. So this is what the Bible was prophesying about. And they did it to Northern Kingdom too. I didn't, just, I didn't pull the pictures for Northern Kingdom, but they did it during the time of the conquistadors as well. Next one. And this is the, what they call gator bait, where they would take the infant children from our mothers while they were asleep, take the suckling babies and put them on near the old water ravine, the shore. And as the baby cried, the alligators would come to the shore and they would tie a rope around the baby's waist. And when the, ba the alligator would swallow the baby, that's when they pulled that using that rope to pull the alligator back on shore, tie its mouth. And that's how they got the leather belts, leather shoes, your leather purses, things of that nature. Next one. Give me the next one. 
Should we read the scripture again, Nehemiah? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 24. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. All right, give me the next one. During the 60s, same thing. They did the same thing to us. Next one. So the Bible is a true book. The Bible is a true book. So Ezekiel 14, 21 talks about God's four sword judgments. Sword, famine, uh, noisome beasts, and pestilence. Give me 2 Ezra 15, verse 5. 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse 5. 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So next, 2 Ezra 15 verse 5 in your notebook. Sword, famine, death, destruction. Regarding sword, that's going to happen throughout the world. Um, Alicia, Officer Alicia, give me the video about France, pull it up, uh, three people got killed in France. Let me look, uh, no, not that one, the next one. It says woman, yeah, 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 that's it. Blow it up big, let's put that on the screen. This was a couple of weeks ago. A woman was beheaded and two others were killed in what police and officials say was a suspected terrorist attack Thursday at a church in the southern French city of Nice. The attacker, who was described as wielding a knife and shouting Allahu Akbar, was quickly detained after being shot by police. Police also shot dead a man who threatened passers-by with a handgun 150 miles away in Montfavet. He was also shouting Allahu Akbar, according to media reports. Thursday's attacks on the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad were condemned by the French President Emmanuel Macron, who called for unity alongside the nation's Catholics. La nation tout entière se tient alors que the whole nation is and will be by their side so that religion can continue to be exercised freely in our country, he said. He added more soldiers would be deployed to protect places of worship and schools. The French Council for the Muslim Faith called for all of today's celebrations to be cancelled as a sign of solidarity. Uh, nice. Nice's mayor, Christian Estrassi, said the victims at the Notre Dame church were killed in, quote, a horrible way. He described the attack as similar to the killings of Samuel Paty, a French teacher beheaded earlier this month in a Paris suburb by a man of Chechen origin. The attacker had said he wanted to punish Paty for showing pupils cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in a civics lesson. En mémoire de Monsieur Samuel Paty. Since the teacher's killing, French officials and politicians, backed by many ordinary citizens, have reasserted the right to display the cartoons. That's prompted an outpouring of anger in parts of the Muslim world, with some governments accusing President Macron of pursuing an anti-Islam agenda. Saudi Arabian state TV reported Thursday that a man was arrested in the Red Sea city of Jeddah after attacking and injuring a guard at the French consulate there. All right, give me the next one regarding the same thing. France across the Islamic world have emerged as a challenge for French President Emmanuel Macron, both at home and abroad. Now, France, in France, Macron faces a big challenge of curbing radical Islam while not giving way to the rise of Islamophobia in the country. Islam is the second largest religion in France. And the country also has the highest Muslim population among European countries. Nearly 6 million Muslims live in France. Earlier this month, Macron unveiled anti-radicalism plans, saying that Islam was in crisis globally. The French president's declaration of war on Islamic separatism has sparked fears of discrimination against Muslims. Some also fear that the move may lead to the rise of right-wing groups. Internationally, Macron has been facing backlash from the leaders of the Islamic world who accuse him of being Islamophobic. 
The row has dented France's relations with Arab countries and also affected Macron's image globally. Calls to boycott French products have been on the rise with supermarkets in countries like Jordan and Qatar removing French products from their shelves. And the intensifying boycott is now likely to affect the French economy. So there's a lot of um, turmoil over there in France. And it's not just going to be over in France. It's going to happen over here as well. A lot of times we disassociate because it's not here in America. But don't forget, uh, there's a lot of our people in France as well. So when the Bible talks about sword, the sword being one of the plagues or one of God's sword judgments, is going into war and things of that nature. City upheavals. Give me um, 2 Ezra 16, 19. Wait, read 2 Ezra 15, 15 again, 15, 5 again, then go to 2 Ezra 16, 19. 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, Death and destruction. Right, now go to 16, 19. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Scourges for amendment. So notice what he wrote, what he mentioned. Anguish, famine, famine, <laughs> famine. Anguish, famine, tribulation, and plague. It's the same four things that we read about from Ezekiel and Second Ezra 5. Now give me Revelation 6, verse 8. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat, upon, sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. So notice again, the same four things, sword, hunger, death, beast. So when you look at the four scriptures, Ezekiel 14, 21, 2 Ezra 15, 5, 2 Ezra 16, 19, Revelation 6 and 8, they are each saying the same thing, sword, famine, uh, death, and plague, which is um, disease. So let's stay right there in Revelation 6. Uh, actually, let's go back up again. So, when the Bible talks about um, famine, give me the video, Alicia, about the uh, food security. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look at it. Food security. Yes, that's it. Put that on there. How much of a threat is coronavirus to the world's food supplies? There are serious warnings of a global shortage as the pandemic spreads. So, how can the availability of food be safeguarded? And can a famine crisis be averted? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Bernard Smith. Widespread famines of biblical proportions. The UN is warning COVID-19 could cause an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe. It says the number of people who can't get enough to eat could double by the end of the year. That's more than a quarter of a billion people. 21,000 people already die of hunger every day. And that number could soar if people don't get help. Food supplies are limited by lockdowns and people's incomes are drying up. Poor countries affected by conflict, economic crisis and climate change are particularly at risk. The UN says this could drive a wave of refugees and threatens an exponential rise in social unrest. The World Food Programme has previously been pledged $1.9 billion and is urging donor nations to live up to their commitments. The UN and other organizations working on extreme hunger say 55 countries already facing crisis are now highly vulnerable to the impact of the virus. And last year, 10 suffered their worst food crises to date. They include Afghanistan, Venezuela, South Sudan, Syria, Nigeria and Haiti. 
Yemen now faces the world's worst malnutrition crisis, and the number of its people acutely short of food is expected to exceed 17 million. The World Food Programme already offers a lifeline to nearly 100 million people, most are trapped in war zones. But if they can't be reached, the WFP says 300,000 could starve to death every day for the next three months. The World Food Programme says urgent action is needed to avoid a humanitarian disaster. We need all parties involved in the conflicts to give us swift and unimpeded humanitarian access to all vulnerable communities so that we can get the assistance to them that they need regardless of who they are or where they are. We also need, in a very general sense, humanitarian goods and commercial trade to continue flowing across the borders because they are the lifeline of global food systems as well as the global economy. Supply chains have to keep moving if we are going to overcome this pandemic and get food from where it is produced to where it is needed. It also means resisting the temptation to introduce like export bans or import subsidies, which can lead to price hikes and almost always backfire. Agriculture and food ministers from the group of 20 countries agreed in a virtual meeting to guard against any unjustified restrictive measures that could lead to excessive food price volatility in international markets and threaten the food security and nutrition of large proportions of the world population. Emergency measures in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic must be targeted, proportionate, transparent and temporary, and that they do not create unnecessary barriers to trade or disruption to the global food supply chains. Well, alrighty then. I know what you're thinking. Thank God we're in the USA. You think it could never happen here? Hmm. It could never happen here. You know, I was getting to my wife the other day about pigeon shopping. You know what pigeon shopping is? Buying just enough for the week. So she goes shopping, and the line is out the door and down the block. By the time she gets there, there's nothing on the shelf. I said, that's what you get when you pigeon shop. Stop being a pigeon. What we take for granted is going to come here. I'm going to go over that with y'all today. Um, one of the next of the four things that the Lord mentioned was death. Now, I saw this, this uh, video. Hey, give me the video about Florida. Black people think they're safe. Okay. We are good in the hood. All righty then. Let me see the top of that. Is that it? No. Go to the top. Is that the top? Yeah, is there a video on it? I thought I had a video. Yeah, I want the video rather than the... um. No. Go out. It should say Florida's Governor DeSantis. Show me. There should be a video, though, that says the same thing. Nope. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. Okay, so go back to that. Yeah, go there. Go to the top. All right, put it on the screen. That's your mind? Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to allow armed citizens to shoot suspected looters and rioters who target businesses and an expansion of the state's stand your ground law. So, do y'all know what suspected looters are? Let's look at the word suspect. You can just be walking by the store. If the store owner suspects you are a looter, pow! He was, he was attempting to loot. That's what a suspect means. And that's going to be in black people. Right. When you suspect somebody, you can't prove it. So, read into the article now. Now, if this gets passed, it's going to go from state to state to state. Netramaya, come on. Governor Ron DeSantis drafted anti-mob legislation that would expand Florida's stand-your-ground law. It would allow armed citizens to shoot suspected looters or anyone engaged in criminal mischief 
that disrupts a business. You're going to graffiti? Shoot you. Go ahead. The proposal came in response to months of protests against police brutality, which have sometimes been accompanied by violence and looting. It would also make it a third degree felony to block traffic during a protest. Drivers who claim to have unintentionally killed or injured protesters who block traffic would be immune from prosecution. DeSantis pledged in September to crack down on violent and disorderly assemblies that occurred after the death of George Floyd, killed by a white cop. His proposal sparked outcry from critics who called it dangerous, unconstitutional, and clearly political. So was there a video in there, Alicia, anywhere regarding this? No? All right, that's the governor right there. All right, there's no video. I thought we had a video. So, all right. So, give me the next video on um, um, the coronavirus, U.S. and coronavirus. Because one, the fourth thing was pestilence or plague. Yeah, put that on there. Thank you, Iona, for this. This helps a lot. The U.S. coronavirus outcry is surging around the country, prompting new mandates. The country has now reported more than 10 million COVID-19 cases. And more than 237,000 deaths has been reported in the U.S. Some officials reinstated restrictions in efforts to contain the coronavirus. Utah declared a two-week state of emergency and ordered residents to wear masks. Maybe because of the spike that we're going through and everything, but I would have made that decision perhaps three or four months ago. After the mask mandate was ordered, some residents protested the measure. The First Amendment says we have the freedom to peaceably assemble, and the governor cannot override that. In New Jersey, residents can no longer sit at bars and restaurants must close by 10 p.m. Endorsed youth sports, including high school teams, are now banned in New Jersey. In Massachusetts, some business face curfews. 9.30 is pretty early, to be honest. Massachusetts residents are asked to remain home between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Um, everybody was respectful with it. No one really gave us a hard time having to, have to like, pack it up and go, so I mean, we cleared it up pretty quick. All non-essential businesses have been ordered to close in El Paso, Texas. And my approach uh, is one that, uh, that, I've, that I've wanted to, to step it up based on the fact that the county hospital is under my purview. And, and that's very important. And I have to look at things from a very different perspective that maybe the city has to look at. And so once again, uh, you know, there's no wedge between us. It's just different focus of what we need to do to be successful. Hospitals in El Paso were beginning to get overwhelmed by the rise in COVID-19 patients. Illinois rolled out new restrictions on businesses in Chicago and some surrounding counties. Well, all right. And you notice that now they want to introduce the vaccine. And they said, uh, what did they say? They said uh, the first one's going to get it is military, uh, law enforcement, um, TSA, it's homeland, um, uh, medical field and school teachers. They're going to be the first ones to get that vaccine. From there, so let's go back to Revelation 6 and let's start at verse 5 now. Revelation chapter 6. Hold on one second. And I know, all those, I know some of you saying right now, I ain't taking it. That's fine. This is what you guys don't understand about Esau. Esau is not stupid. Esau is not even going to force you to take it. Some of you are going to take it voluntarily. You want to know why? Esau is going to make it so bad. They don't have to beg you to take it. You're going to actually you're going to want to take it. That's how bad. That, if you know this, that's how bad they're making it. Now they got more cases coming like it's crazy now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they created the chaos. And they come behind closed door. We got the solution. The vaccine. That's what they're doing. The mass is going to be begged to take it. They're not even going to beg you to take it. You're going to beg to take it. That's how, that's how you so do. Right. All right. So let's just found a video that was there. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yes. So it's after the fact. But go ahead. Put it on the screen, Alicia. Come on, man. 
He had one job, one job. Florida Governor moves. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has drafted new anti-mob legislation to expand the state's stand your ground law. According to Miami Herald, the proposal would allow armed citizens to shoot looters. The draft defines looting as burglary within 500 feet of a violent or disorderly assembly. The proposal also justifies the use of force against people engaged in criminal mischief that causes interruption or impairment of a business. In addition, DeSantis' proposal would make it a third degree felony to block traffic during a protest. Drivers who claim to unintentionally kill or injure protesters blocking traffic would also receive immunity. Den Denise Georges, a former Miami-Dade County prosecutor, said the proposal would allow vigilantes to justify their actions. It, allows, it also allows for death to be the punishment for a property crime, and that is cruel and unusual punishment. We cannot live in a lawless society where taking a life is done so casually and recklessly. say something about this. Well, we got to think about with that law even being put on the table. Um, we've seen the riots and things that happened during like the Black Lives Matter uh, protest and things. And you clearly see that the cops are overwhelmed. And the, um, the overall thought of um, police is, is, is a negative um, viewpoint in America. And uh, not, not enough people are uh, coming into the academies to help fill out the numbers to handle the large mass of people. You pass this law where you can shoot looters or whatever, like it's showing on there, what you are doing is giving power to those white militia groups right. to be police to help out without having to actually recruit and pay uh, actual police officers. They'll do it right. for you. They'll show up and shoot, out, shoot the people that Right. You want to shoot. That's a part of the defund the police thing. So, okay, you want to defund the police? We're going to give the citizens power to protect their business. And no, they're going to shoot black people left. So black people stupid. Yeah. Defund the police. We don't need no cops. He killed one of us. You wait till these militia groups even suspect you walk by their business. Watch what they do. And they get to run you, run you over. Yep. And there's no uh, penalty. Oh, boy. Y'all have no idea. Revelation 6 verse 5, please. Revelation chapter 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So this black horse represents um, the dark nations. And the pair of balances represent the injustice that's going to take place regarding the dark nations. Read. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So the voice is saying, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. That's going on to the food shortage that's going to be, the injustice in terms of food. Like we were just talking about famine. We were just reading about that. Give me Jeremiah. Hold that. We're coming right back here. Give me Jeremiah 31, 12. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, for wheat and for wine and for wine and for oil and for oil and for the young of the flock. And of the herd, and their souls shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. So the reason I went here because it talks about wine, wheat, and oil, which goes into the food industry. Watch this, Sirach thirty nine twenty six. Thank you. So Ecclesiasticus thirty nine twenty six. Ecclesiasticus chapter thirty nine verse twenty six. The principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, 
So and the flour, wheat, blood of the grape, that's the wine. And what? And oil. And oil. And clothing. So these are the principal things. So we go back to Revelation 6 again. If you're a 6 again for us. Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. You've got to realize that you have the IMF, uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and you have various governmental organizations that deal with the price gouging of foods and things of that nature from nation to nation. Like we just saw the video and how they bring, they said there's going to be a food shortage in Haiti. And it's all the dark nations. And it's, oh, we don't want this. If it's, if it's too bad, we won't be able to get the food there. They did this all on purpose. This is by design, not by accident. Verse 7. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse. Mm -hmm. This deals with death. Go ahead. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of the earth goes into the fourth kingdom, which goes into America. Right? To kill with sword. Sword. And with hunger. And with hunger is famine. And with death. And with death. And with the beast of the earth. And with the beast of the earth. So you may ask, well, how are they killing with the beast of the earth? Give me the next clip. I mean, that article. Uh... Actually, there might be, a, is there a video? Give me a zoonosis. We went over this before. Uh, just read that first section and then jump down. A zoonosis, plural zoonosis, or zoonotic diseases, is an infectious disease caused by a pathogen, an infectious agent such as a bacterium, virus, parasite, or prion that is jumped from a non-human animal, usually a vertebrate, to a human. Typically, the first infected human transmits, transmits the infectious agent to at least one other human who in turn infects others. Okay, when it says jumps from, that means in a laboratory. That's what it's going into. Go all the way down. Now there's a video, they took this video off. Remember I showed y'all about Judy, what's her name, Markovitz, which she was a scientist and she talked about, she took part in creating AIDS, uh, Ebola, and she said they splice human DNA with animal fetal tissue. Okay? Like, let's look at uh, coronavirus. Is that on there? Look for that. COVID-19. COVID Read that, that's mine. COVID-19. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Coronavirus 2. SARS-CoV-2. Suspected bats, pang pangolins, felines, minks. Respiratory transmission, COVID-19 pandemic, 2019 to present. Jump down. Find me some of the more popular ones. So, wait, wait, wait. Go back. I'm sorry. I didn't even mention it. Uh, COVID-19, uh, notice suspected. This is what they use. Bats, pangolins, felines, and minks. Not suspected. They knew exactly what was put into it. Go down. Find me a pop more popular one while I'm searching for something. Just read the popular ones off. Ebola virus disease, a hemorrhagic uh, fever, Ebola virus, SPP, Ch chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, fruit bats, monkeys, shrews, forest antelope, and porcupines. So those are the types of animals used, mixed with human DNA, to create that. And the video, when she goes in there, they took it all off YouTube. Yep. Go down. Find me another one. So my point is they use the beasts of the field. What they do is take in their DNA, mix it with human DNA to create these things. Influenza. Influenza. Influenza A virus. Horses, pigs, domestic and wild birds, wild aquatic mammals such as seals and whales, Minks and farm carnivores, transmitted by droplets, transmitted through the air. All right, go to the next one. Find me a popular one, unless you... No, Lep no give me another one. Mm, Lyme disease? All right, go ahead. Lyme disease. Bor Borrelia burgdorferi. Deer, okay. wolves, 
dogs, birds, rodents, rabbits, hares, rap, reptiles, transmitted by tick bite. Go down, go down. For me, popular one, popular. Rabies. Rabies virus. Commonly, dogs, bats, monkeys, raccoons, foxes, skunks, so, cattle. So, so hold on. The Lyme disease, so they concocted something and injected it into ticks yes. and bred a disease carrying. Right. That's wow. what they do. Even like with the Ebola. There's, if y'all look up um, Vice Magazine, did a sport. find me Ebola up there. Go back and find me Ebola. Ebola, E-B-O, right there. Put it on the screen. Read that one. Ebola virus disease, a hemorrhagic fever. Ebola virus, SPP. Trans, uh, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, fruit bats, monkeys, shrews, forest antelope, and porcupines. And on Vice Magazine, they have uh, videos on YouTube where they talk about um, the Ebola crisis and how uh, Europeans have laboratories uh, in Liberia, where they experiment on chimpanzees uh, and various types of monkeys, then they release those monkeys into the wild there. And then some of the poor people eat them. They call it bushmeat, eat them, and that's, that's how Ebola came about. This is what they do. So corona is no different than Ebola. Find me Zika. Zika should be on there somewhere. Zika fever. Mm -hmm. Zika virus. Chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, monkeys, baboons. Mosquito bite, sexual intercourse, blood transfusion, and sometimes bites of monkeys. Mm -hmm. So, go back to Revelation 6. Verse and, 9. Uh, no, where are we at? Verse 8 again. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. So now we understand what it means by the beast of the earth. That's called zoonosis. From there, give me Second Ezra 15 and 1. If you ever get a chance, if you find a video on Plandemic uh, with a woman, Judy Makovitz, she explained exactly how they do it in the lab. She said it's not by um, natural causes. She said it takes centuries for a disease to uh, accelerate. Centuries. She said these diseases are being created within months, if not years. Then they're getting patents on it. Okay. Amplified. Something like that. Amplified. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra 15 and 1, please. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Behold. Speak thou in the ears of my people the word. You know what's funny about that? This man creates the disease, uh, lets it loose, causes a surge and a, a, a pandemic. Then the masses of the people say, we need a vaccine. He just sits back and waits. He said, I'm your oppressor and I'm your savior at the same damn time. You can't make this stuff up. It's like when he destabilizes countries. And then, then they wait for those countries to reach out to America. Dun, 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 dun. Here I come to save the day. That's what they do. But you caused all the madness. You're the one that caused this. Second Ezra 15 and 1. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper. The written in paper is the Bible. Go ahead. For they are faithful and true. For all that is written is faithful and true. Believe that. Go ahead. Verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. So, brothers and sisters, we are not to fear any imagination against us. No matter what is said or done regarding the Israelites, we are not to fear. Go ahead. Let not the incredulu incredulity. Incredulity. Of, incredulity. Of In a lack of faith. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Of them trouble thee. Can yes. we look up that word, incredulity? Look that up. Look that up. Somebody spell it for Alicia. He's black. <laughs> Somebody help him. He got I in. Not incredible. No, not log. Mm -mm. L I T. 
Very good, Alicia. Very good. You only look smart. You only look smart. Alicia looks smart. <laughs> you see what it says? Read that, def- uh, Nechemiah. Incredulity. Oh, God. Incredulity. <laughs> Incredulity. <Definition>. Incredulity. <laughs> hey, every now and then. Incredulity. The quality or state of being incredulous. Disbelief. Just, let's look at some synonyms. Synonyms. Disbelief, non-belief, unbelief. So that's what we want. Disbelief, non-belief, unbelief. Go back to 2nd Ezra 15, and I want you to look at verse 3 once again. Verse 3, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredul- incredul- oh God. incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. See that, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. This is why you got Facebook videos, YouTube videos against the Israelites, against IUIC particularly. The Bible says don't let the non-belief of these people that speak against us trouble you. Don't let that trouble you. All the men and women that left this congregation and I was doing YouTube videos against us, they don't believe the Bible. They do not believe the word of God. Read the verse once again. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Mm-hmm, go ahead. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All those men and women that left up out of here. The Bible says, read that verse again. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. God has promised that they shall die in their unfaithfulness. I hope you men and women see that. Some of you sitting back, you still got your friends. I ain't talking about your, your, your friends in the world. I ain't talking about that. No, he's not really your friend. I'm talking about men and women who gave the middle finger to the word of God and the congregation, and now he's speaking against it. You want to hold on to that? Well, don't think because you're sitting in here that the Lord don't see that. When their judgment comes, yours does too. And we won't be shocked why. Read on. Verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord. I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. See that? And the souls of the just complain continually. Go ahead. Verse 9. And therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Mm -hmm. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Mm Mm-hmm. Verse talking about captivity, go ahead. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Remember, this was, Ezra was doing the Persian Mede captivity. So what is he talking about in verse 11? But I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as, forgive me, Jeremiah 16. This Egypt is spiritual Egypt that it's talking about. That's the United States. Alicia, can you find me the dollar bill, please? Dollar bill, dollar, dollar, dollar bill, please. Find me that. You know what I want, right? All right. Go. We got. I know we got some new brothers, new sisters. You got it. Yeah, put that one up on the screen. Yep. All right. As you can see on the left side of the dollar bill, you have the, um, what is that called? The seal of America. One of the seals. I want That one with the um, pyramid, which are all seeing eye of Ra. Under it, it says, Novus Ordo Seclorum, New World Order, or New Order World. The bottom of the pyramid says 1776. All right. So when the Bible talks, I don't want that one, Alicia. I just went right there. When the Bible talks about Egypt, it's talking about this spiritual Egypt. Give me that in Revelation 11. That's your mind. You know what I want? 
All right. Leave it on the screen. This is for the new brothers and sisters that may not be aware. Revelation chapter 11, verse, verse 13. And the same hour. I went spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Meaning their dead bodies, meaning they're, we're spiritually dead, mentally dead. Go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom So and this Egypt. place is spiritually called Sodom. Go ahead. And Egypt. And this place is spiritually called Egypt. Why is it spiritually called Sodom? Because they have gay rights here. They have same-sex marriages are allowed here. Okay? You can't even speak against them. And it's also spiritually called Egypt. Okay? Real quick, go to Deuteronomy 28, 68. I'm just showing you the correlation with the use of the word Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Here's one of the curses that came upon the children of Israel. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is synonymous for captivity. When you read Exodus 20, verse 2. Give me that real quick. We're coming right back here to Deuteronomy 28. Elisha, find me the next ones, the ships. But leave that on the screen until you, and you find it. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So the land of Egypt refers to the house of bondage. So in Deuteronomy 28, 68 again, read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We were going to the house of bondage again with ships. You got it, Alicia? Okay, take that down. And I will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. I thought computers could multitask. Damn. Hmm. It's Riverdale. It's Riverdale. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, pick a good one, Alicia. Nechemiah, read it again. Rebel, um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. When it talks about ships, it's talking about cargo slave ships. And the Lord shall bring you into the house of bondage again with ships. What kind of ships? Cargo slave ships. That's what we're looking at right there. Can that fill a screen, Alicia? Or no? Okay. All right, find me another one. All right, Nechemiah, read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, and there when you get off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies mm -hmm. for bondmen, slave men, and bondwomen, and slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man will be able to save you from the curse of God. No man. Can that one fill the screen, Alicia? All right, you got a little small picture. It's all right. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra 15. And we were in verse 11 again. 2nd Ezra is chapter 15, verse 11. Listen good to the prophecy. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues. And God said he will smite this place with plagues. As before. As before. Go ahead. And will destroy all the land thereof. This whole place is going to be destroyed. This whole place is going to be destroyed. Just like ancient Egypt was smitten and destroyed, the same thing is going to happen here. And let me tell you, um, Funkadelic Israelites, something online. There's no deliverance without the destruction of your enemies. You cannot be saved and save your Caucasian friends. It's not going to happen. Give me that um, Wisdom of Solomon. Is it 17? 18, 7. 18, 7. With that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. Read it once more again. So of thy people was accepted both so the... So of thy people was accepted... Both the salvation... Both of, 
both the salvation of the righteous of the righteous that's the Israelites and destruction of the enemy and destruction of the enemy see you can't have it both ways somebody somebody be got to be saved and somebody got to die that's so give me that give me the one in Isaiah is it 43 he said I had a, I ransomed you from Egypt I want that one I got to show y'all cuz I know some of you right now you want to save your, your chuck or you want to save Miss Laura? It ain't happening. Read that. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. He said, I gave Egypt for thy ransom. God ransomed Egypt for us. Go ahead. Ethiopia and Seba for thee. And Ethiopia and Seba. That's uh, Seba's the Sabians, which is Somalia. Okay, for us, that's what the prophecy said. That's what God did. As it was then, so it shall be today. Somebody, somebody got to be saved. Somebody got to die. Okay, you cannot have it both ways. This ain't Burger King. Go back to Second Ezra 15. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. So the prophecy says this place is going to be plagued here. Go ahead. Verse 13. No matter how, well, white man, yeah, the Lord allowed that. The Lord allowed them spirits to go into the white man's mind and create this, that, and the other. Go ahead. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail, and with a fearful constellation. So what do you think that means? That they and they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail. Famine. Famine. Sisters, don't pigeon shop. Don't be a pigeon. Read on. <laughs> Verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. See that? It says, for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh. Go ahead. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. That's what I showed you over in France. And what we're seeing happening in, in Europe, it's only a matter of time before it trickles down here. We saw a couple of years ago, remember when they had the uh, rally in, was it South Carolina? And the Edomite took the car and ran the white girl over? Oh, Charlottesville. Charlottesville. It's only a matter of time these things are going to escalate, escalate, escalate. Go ahead. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Watch this come to pass shortly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 18. They may, they may set it where you can't go city to city without being vaccine. Like when we go to Africa, we got to show the yellow fever card. Don't think it's too far-fetched they can't do that here in America. You want to go from one city to the next? Let's see your vaccine card. They said Atlanta is a hot spot. Texas is number one. You go from here to New York, you got to be quarantined for 14 days. They're going to put it into that. Watch. You want to come from Atlanta to go there? Where's your vaccine papers? Swatch. What do you say? Oh, yeah, you got it? Put that on the screen. You, 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 you late, but I'm glad you got it. You always right on time. Go ahead. You seem like oh, you seem like you jump. I just want you missed the spot. Come on, Alicia, right there, around there. Let me hear it. Which means you can't say there's a case, or your lawyers are held in contempt of court, so you can't. This even is get Judy Mockers, by the way. Defend you. So every single due process right was taken away from me, and to this day remains the same. I have no constitutional freedoms or rights. Yet you sit here. I think a lot of people would Can you jump in? Click in just in a little bit, not far. Just click. Stop this now. We can not only forget our republic and our freedom, but we can forget humanity because we'll be killed. Yeah, I want what she mentions about Ebola. So Anthony Fauci. My, uh, Dr. Tony Fauci. You know Tony what I want, Fauci's Alicia? Organ okay. Mm, I wish I had this earlier. Uh, okay, we can't find it. But this is the video. This is the video. Um, it's right after that, Alicia. 
after that. Let me hear from there. IL-2 therapy, which was absolutely the wrong therapy. And had that not happened, millions wouldn't have died um, from HIV. How can a man who's giving, any, any person who's giving ad global advice for health own a patent in the solution in the vaccine? Isn't that a conflict of interest or shouldn't it be? It is a conflict of interest. You already said, in fact, how can you have, one of the there's a, a disease and you got a patent for the same disease. They had the patent long ago. Some of y'all love this white man so much, y'all don't realize he's the devil the Bible speaks of. He cannot be, like, I love the way the sister said it. He cannot be your oppressor and savior at the same It's impossible. What is wrong with black people? Who raised you? <laughs> All right, let's, we can't find it. If, 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 who's, who's looking at the video? If somebody could find a spot, it'll show on your team, find the spot where she talks about uh, mixing human DNA with animal fetal tissue. Just find me that spot. All right, so Nechemiah, where are we at? Verse 18. Yes, go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Read. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. I want you to see what that part says right there, verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and, this is the, this is it, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Don't sleep. God says this is going to happen throughout the world. Lack of bread and great tribulation. Read. So you sisters, don't pigeon shop. Go ahead. Verse 20. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Libanus. Libanus is Lebanon. To turn themselves one against another. God's going to cause nation to fight against nation. That's the same thing Christ said in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Go ahead. And repay the things that they have done to them. See that? And repay the things that they have done. What the nations did to us, the Lord said, I'm doing all this for y'all Israelites. So what you're busy praying that this don't come to pass for? This is for our salvation. Come on. Verse 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. That's the proof right there. Go ahead. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is gone forth from his wrath. And hath consumed the foundations of the earth. And the sinners like the straw that is kindled. Verse 24. Woe to them that sin. And keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. You see what it says? Woe to them, meaning great sorrow. Destruction to them that sin and keep not my commandments. That's why we got to stay in this truth. We must hold on and endure to the very end. If your friend fall out this truth, let them go. They chose the woe part. They chose to, re to reap God's judgment. That's on them. Don't lose your salvation for a quote unquote somebody you think is a friend. That friend would be a devil in disguise and their job could be you. Their only job is to pull your symbol behind out. Now you're out there in the street crying, doing videos cursing people out. Yeah, okay. Alrighty then. Jump down to verse 40. Verse 40. The great and mighty cloud shall be lifted up full of wrath. And the star... This is about chariots, and when it talks about the stars, it's talking about an ICBM missile. It's going to say that. Go ahead. That they may make all the earth afraid. Because all the earth is going to be afraid of the star. Go ahead. And them that dwell therein, mm -hmm. and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and horrible star. And horrible star. Watch this. Fire and hail and flying swords. Flying swords are small missiles. Go ahead. And many waters, that all fields may be full, and all rivers... With the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls. Mountains and hills. Trees of the wood. And grass of the meadows. And their corn. Verse 43. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon. And make her afraid. That's America. Go ahead. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all the wrath shall 
shall they pour out upon her. The star which is the, of ICBM and Orash shall they pour shall they pour out upon her. Babylon, go ahead. Then shall the dust and smoke go up un, unto the heaven, and all they that be about her shall bewail her. See that now? Hold on. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna prove that. Give me that Revelation 18, 9 and ten. Revelation chapter 18, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off from, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Y'all see that? Um, all right. Hey, Malachi, you got that? Asaph just sent it over. Send it to, uh, Elisha. Elisha, did you find the spot where she said it or no? Okay, put it on the screen. By way of the laboratory. So it's very clear this virus was manipulated. These, this family of viruses was manipulated and studied in a laboratory where the animals were taken into the laboratory. And this is what was released, whether deliberate or not. That cannot be naturally occurring. Somebody didn't go to a market, get a bat. The virus didn't Dang. jump directly to humans. That's not how it works. That's accelerated viral evolution. If it was a natural occurrence, it would take it up to 800 years to occur. This occurred from SARS-1 within a decade. That's not, that's not naturally occurring. And do you have any ideas of where this occurred? Oh, yeah. I'm sure it occurred between the North Carolina Laboratories, Fort Detrick, U.S. Army Research Institute of Infectious Disease, and the Wuhan Laboratory. $3.7 million flowed from the National Institutes of Health here in the U.S. to the Wuhan lab in China, the same lab where many people have said that this coronavirus infection first originated. Right, so we also I'm glad, I wanted her to say it because I know y'all won't believe me because I'm black. So we need the white woman to tell you. Unless you got another video, put it on the screen. So she said, that's not natural. These diseases are created in a laboratory. So they can't be your oppressor and save it. Stop praying to them. Stop hogging on them. Leave these people alone. Voting for them. Oh, I'm voting for Bit with not Bin Laden. What's his name? Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the screen. Let's see. So you need another animal host in order to attenuate the virus, in order to change the virus, to teach it to infect an immune system that's closer to humans. So all animals, you know, and so the why the theory of the bat virus just jumping from uncooked soup in a seafood market in, in, in Wuhan, China, into humans um, makes absolutely no sense because usually and, and essentially in all the latest pandemics, the intermediate wasn't another small animal, as we're told. The intermediate was a, an animal cell line or animal tissues repeatedly grown. So what, what we did, and this is why I mentioned my, or you mentioned my 1999. In 1999, I worked at USAMRID, which is the US Army Research Institute of Infectious Disease, there at Fort Detrick, Maryland, right next to the National Cancer Institute. And my what I did at the time was two things. I taught the Ebola virus, Ebola Zaire, which was a highly pathogenic strain. My job was to teach it to infect human cells without killing them. Do y'all see that she's telling on herself? Wait, wait, hold that. Hold it, hold it right there. Give me the scripture that says I'll make their tongue to fall upon themselves. You know what I'm talking about? Psalm something, Psalm 64, somewhere around there. I will make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. I know if I said it, y'all woman, oh, you a conspiracy theorist, Negro. Y'all right now online, they don't believe me. So I, the white woman is telling you herself. Watch them uh, delete the video now. 64 verse 8, come on. 
Psalm 64, verse 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. Y'all better run from these white folks. Y'all better flee away from them. That's what the Bible says. It ain't me. I'm not saying this out of some personal bias. You know why? Because the white man sure all been good to me. But when it comes to the Bible, I know what the Bible says. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all got some good high paying, high falutin jobs. The white man been good to me. I don't know what this nigga talking about. The hell is this? I ain't going to. But listen, y'all better believe what the Bible says. Some of y'all just got from the white woman last week. You know, you brothers over there know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we are going back to her. Go put the video back. Study a virus. All the heads went down. We, can oh, grow it. It, we can't understand how it causes disease in an animal unless we can grow enough copies of it. And at that time, the Ebola virus, and I have to admit it was somewhat scary to do this research, but at that time, the Ebola virus was just killing, just destroying um, the cells. They'd blow apart almost instantly. You can't study that if that happens. So I had my, my, my entire career had been tissue culture, animal tissue culture, human tissue culture, grow various cancers in the laboratory in order to study how they develop and what causes them and what parts of the immune system are dysregulated. So that the, I, I did finally, what the way I would do it is you keep feeding, literally just keep feeding the virus more cells until one day a cell doesn't die. And then you can grow that cell perpetually using various um, growth factors that we do in the lab. It's not difficult um, in order to study the virus. So th we did that. And then the second thing we did was we took, this was 1999, we took Ebola Zaire, which was the highly pathogenic strain, um, and we compared it to the Ebola Reston, Reston, Virginia strain. Why they had a strain of Ebola from Africa and West in Reston, Virginia, I don't even want to touch. But at any rate, um, it sounds like a Wuhan lab, lab next to a seafood market to me. Now, go back to Revelation 6 and 8. So now, now thank y'all for fun. Thank you, Deacon Ace. I appreciate you. Uh, go back to Revelation. Was it 6 and 8 he was reading about death and hell and all of that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth mm -hmm. to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. So the beasts of the earth, they mince those animal DNA tissue with human tissue and create these pathogens. That's what they do. Don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on these people. You know, as they said that Pfizer have a vaccine, right? Or they also say China got one. I think Pfizer's is 94%, China's is 92%. But anyway, some countries are really signed with China. But they're all, they're all, the big talk now is about Africa. Africa have no money. Africa cannot afford this, the vaccine. So what do you think they're going, what do you think they're going to do? Remember, this thing don't hit, that don't, did not hit Africa like they think it was going to do. A lot of the countries in Africa don't, even get, don't get hit at all. And they're still asking themselves, why is that? There is a God. Mm -hmm. so That's not, right. Yeah, there is a God. So now there's a lot of poor countries that cannot that not be able to afford it. So what do you think they're going to do? They're going to come, go in, in there. You already know what's going to do. But again, there is a God. They're going to give them the vaccine and say, you owe us. Yeah. One point, whatever, eight billions, billions of dollars. And if you ain't got the money... We're going to take this land property over here. They're going to take these resources, take your oil, your gold. We're going to take this and take that. That's what they're going to do. Second Ezra 16, please. Verse 1, then we're going to jump. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Asia or Egypt and Syria. So these countries are going to get hit too. Okay, jump on down. Jump down to verse 18, please. Verse 18. 
the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of famine and great death. Go ahead. The beginning of wars. I want you all to see how the, the, the pestilence, like we would just look on the news, it affects the economy. Because because of the coronavirus, they had to shut down businesses. Some of y'all lost your jobs. Then the, there was a food shortage. Lines was out the box long. Don't sleep on what's happening. Go on. The beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish. Look at that. Famine, plague, that's disease, pestilence, tribulation and anguish. Go ahead. Are sent as scourges for amendment. Go ahead. Verse 20. Watch but, this. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. The people ain't repenting, the Lord said. The people ain't changing. Go ahead. Nor be always mindful of the scourges. Go ahead. Behold, vittles shall be so cheap, so good cheap upon earth. That's why here in America, everybody, oh, thank God I'm in the USA. Thank God Almighty. It says, behold, vittles, that means food. Behold, vittles shall be so good cheap. Where's Walmart? Where's BJ's? Where's, uh, you know, they got them big supermarkets everywhere. I don't know all their names. Publix and Kroger's. Where are we going there? Yeah, 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 let's go. Go ahead, read it again. Behold, vittles shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. That's y'all here in America. That's y'all here. Go ahead. And even then shall evils grow upon earth. Even then shall evils grow on earth. Go ahead. Sword. Sword. Famine. Famine. And great confusion. And great confusion. That covers a whole litany of things, that great confusion. Why is this happening? Why are these things happening? Go ahead. Verse 22. For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. Now see that there's going to be a lot of people to die of famine. Those are the clips I showed a little earlier. Go ahead. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So the Bible said if, if you escape that, there's going to be war. You're going to get shot down, killed in the street. When it's talking about sword, it's talking about opposition. People coming against you. This goes into race wars, nation against nation. It covers a whole lot of stuff. Jump down to verse 34, please. Verse 34. In the war shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. Hear now these things, and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. So all you servants of the Lord. Give me that. Hold that. Leviticus 25, 55. The servants of the Lord that he said to understand is not everybody on the planet. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 55. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. The children of Israel are the only servants of God Almighty. The children of Israel, we're the only servants. Go back now to 2nd Ezra 16. 2nd Ezra. And what verse was you in? Verse 35. 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 35. Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. That means believe it. So if you run up out of here, ah, I'm tired of this. Because that's going to happen to some of y'all. We don't, we don't uh, have a, uh, a cloud over our head to think that everybody in here or everyone listening is going to always remain in this truth. Some of y'all are going to get pulled out. Some of you women are going to get pulled out by some uh, rotten husband you ha might happen to have. And some of you brothers are going to get pulled out by some of your rotten wives. Some of you. Not all of you. Some of you. So they're going to give you ultimatums. It's either that, that Bible or my booty. Which one? Yeah, we just saw, we have many examples. Many examples of that. We've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it. You, and they, you choose them over me. It ain't them choosing us. They're choosing the word of God over you. Brothers, there's a lot of booty in the world. Believe me. Sister, there's a lot of rod if that's what you're into. There's a lot of rod out there. Don't worry about it. There's somebody for you that believes it's unfortunate you get these young men and young women, you get hooked up with a nooker because you did a backdoor wedding, yeah. not wedding, backdoor marriage, marriage a, booty a booty call, and now that person was used to pull you out. Now, and you, and, and, and be unfortunate if you got children with them because if you got kids with them, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you all messed up in the memory. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do. Go make some new kids. You go find you another spouse. God going to bless you. But I'm 50. I'm 50. No, sis, stop. 
You're going to have some more kids. Don't worry about that. Even not now in the kingdom. Listen, you might find a brother to have children if you want kids. Listen, some of y'all get messed up in the head. Okay, I remember, I'll tell you the story. My, me and my wife had a fight. This is a long, long time ago. She's going to go to her mother and father's house with a fight. She would take the kids with her. I said, oh, you're going to take the kids too? I said, okay. <clears throat> I brought the clothes over. Rubbed over. Uh, and I'm walking out. She said, Angie, you going to say uh, hi to the kids? I said, those are your kids. They ain't my kids. I'm going to go make me some new kids. That's right. Don't let nobody hold no kids over. What is wrong with you, man? Who raised you? You're all messed up in the head. Some of y'all are 25, 30. You can have babies after babies. You stuck on that one little one you just had. If that child is meant to come in this truth, guess what? The Lord going to bring them in. There's nothing the wicked woman can do. And sister, vice versa. There's nothing. He don't want me to see the kids or she don't want me to see the kids. Don't worry about that. At the end, you send up them prayers. The Lord going to bring that child right back. You want to hear a door on one day? Who is it? It's me, daddy. Oh, shoot. Like with Joseph and... um. Jacob. Remember Jacob thought he was dead. He said, my son's dead. I'm never going to see him again. Not so. Not so. See, once you believe the scriptures, can't nobody hold nothing over your head. Ain't nobody holding no children over my head. You men are suffer suffering succotashes. You let a woman hold a child over your head. Suffering succotash. Tell us what's wrong with you. And you set up your little bank. So what? Then we can pay child support. Don't worry about it. You put and get you get your bank account. Put the money in there so that way she ain't gonna go to the court and lie on you. He don't pay nothing. He don't do nothing. Nope. Here's the account. He get here all his everything. Here's the receipts. You got receipts. I ain't saying these women lie, but women lie. Where are we at, Officer Nechemiah? Verse thirty-six, sir. Go ahead. Second Esther chapter six. I hope that touched the heart on somebody listening right now. Go ahead. Somebody Second, might be going through some stuff. Go ahead. Where we at? Second Esther chapter 16, verse 36. Behold the word of the Lord. Receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. These idols. People following these idols, these false religions. Christianity is a perfect example. Why Jesus telling you what? Peace. This shall be peace. Then what the hell is the coronavirus about? Right, right. I don't know. The hell is this? Why are black people getting shot down in the street? Why are we getting George Floyd? What the hell is going on here? What's the latest boy that got put to death? Kuan, Ku, Kuan Charles? I, ain't, I might mess his name up. I'm sorry. What's the brother, brother? Young brother. Pull up, pull up the flyer if y'all got it. Who got the flyer? Somebody pull it up. Put it on the screen. The ad. It's a young boy. Kuan Charles or something like that. I might be butchering his name. I apologize. I'm not doing it on purpose. No. The young boy that looked like that. He got like Emmett Till. He looked like Emmett Till. He's from Louisiana. It's Kwan. Kwan. What is it? Q U A W A N. Thank you. Put it on the screen. The one on the. Uh, which one? No, no. Uh, I went to one. The fifth one. Click the fifth one. Right there. It's black and white. Put it on the screen. All right, put it on the screen. This is what they did to that little boy. This is what white folks did to that little boy. And guess what? Some of y'all keep saying, it's just the police. It ain't just the police. It's Esau. Because the white woman came to his house with the little white boyfriend of his from school and said, come, let's take a walk. Then it's just what happened to the boy. They ain't your friends. The Bible said flee from them. You better teach your kids right. What's, is there another one? That's the same thing that looked like Emmett Till. That's what I was saying when I see it. Just reminds me of that. Was there another one? Uh, Ari, you said there's another one somewhere? Yeah, is there one, one in color? color? Right there. No, no, the one right, right there. There you go. It looks pixelated. They jacked it up. It's all... You can't even see the face in color. Well, you better leave these white folks alone. Yeah, put that on the screen. That's it right there. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. 
Go ahead. Uh, 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 Zakal, go ahead. Check, check. Yeah, so this is the, the image right here of the, of the young man that happened 65 years later. Let you know nothing changed, exact same way. And, and what happened with the story is the kid, the mother wasn't home. The little, uh, the white woman came and picked him up to take uh, him over her house with her son. And then uh, the next thing you know, six days later, he was found dead in a field with his face looking like that. Yeah, read that. It says uh, at the top, uh, Deuteronomy 2850, a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Uh, it says Emmett Till, abducted, beat, mutilated, shot in the head, sunken in the Tallahatchie River three days until discovered and retrieved from the river. 65 years later, Kawan Charles, taken from home without permission, Beat until a skin torn from face, found face down in a creek near a sugar cane field. By the way, Emmett Till also was taken from home without permission, too. He was also, that's what's missing from that flyer. So you Christians got to ask yourself a question. Where is the love of Jesus? Where's the good white Christian folk at? Where they at? Because we sure as hell don't see them. And why aren't they blaming those Christian, exactly. Christian folks? Exactly. Exactly. Where are we at? What was the next Verse 37, sir. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 37. Behold, the plague's draw nigh. And, this, and you know, it bugs me because sometimes black people, you say, well, it didn't happen to my child. Well, thank, you better thank the Lord it didn't happen to your child. But that child is your child. When we all think as a collective like that, Give me that in um, uh, Luke 4 about the gospel. The gospel, we need the good news. We need the gospel. Now we can add Kuan Charles to that. And it's a sad, sad thing, but it's our reality. Read that. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The poor, meaning poor in spirit, the brokenhearted. You don't think our people are broken hearted? Put it back up on the screen, Elisha. Put that back up on the screen. Now, if you're real with yourself, when I first heard this story, to this moment when I look at, Elisha, come on, man. Come on, roll with me, man. Come on. If you're real with yourself, this makes you brokenhearted. Did it? Who's broken hearted when they say this? Raise your hand and say aye. aye. This, the gospel is far because we're the broken hearted. Who wants to see a young man that's happened to? No, but not one of us. So Luke 4, 18, read it again. Leave it on the screen right there. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. And we're the captives. If you don't know that America's a captive uh, country, we're captive here. We were brought here as slaves. Okay? And recovering a sight to the blind. We're blind to the mysteries and words of God. We're the blind. We're trying to recover our sight now. Okay? To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Our people are bruised here. We're the bruised. The gospel's for us. Where are you at? Was that it? That's it. Yes. This is a time of Jacob's trouble, brothers and sisters. Do you understand that? This is Jacob's trouble. And it's, it's, some, it's, going to, it's, going to, it's going to escalate. It is going to escalate. Okay. Where are we at now, Nehemiah? Uh, verse 37. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As, a, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son. Within two or three hours of her birth, Great pains com compass, compass her womb, which, which uh, pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. I want you to understand verse 38. God says the plagues, he's comparing it to a woman with child. In the ninth month, bringing forth her son. Within two or three hours of her birth, great pains compass her womb. So childbearing pains, they get what they call them contractions, if I got it right there. There's space between. Okay, you got a sharp pain, then it calms down. Then you get another sharper pain, then it calms down. Then you get another pain harder than that, then it calms down, then the baby comes. God said this is how the plagues is going to be. 
Don't think because of plagues these time during Jacob's trouble, when the plagues calm down, you go, oh, we good now. I'm going back to T.D. Jakes. I want to see that feel-good motivational. Sp- uh-uh. Mm-mm, you better get your mind right. Read that again, that's your mind. Verse 38. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, within two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb, which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Verse 39. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. O my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. We got to make ready to the battle, the Lord is saying. Now, what we're reading, go. it happened many times in history. Now we're in these last days. Watch what it says. Come on. And in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Let's get our passports. Y'all better get ready. Get ready. Go ahead. Verse 41. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. We got to have the mindset that what we think we got right now, we can lose it so easily. So, so easily. That's when the New Testament says, don't give uh, about uncertain riches. Don't put no, no faith in uncertain riches. Go ahead. Verse 42. He that occupieth merchandise as he that hath no profit by it. And he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell therein. Read. He that soweth as if he should not reap, so also that planteth the vineyard, as he that shall not gather the grapes. Mm-hmm. Verse 44, they that marry, as, as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not, as the widowers. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. From there, let's go to Psalms 91, Psalms 91. So we got to wake up, brothers and sisters. Wake up, smell the coffee. The Lord is give, recovering sight to the blind. We're the blind. He's recovering our sight. So now we can see with our spiritual eyes. We can see with our physical and spiritual eyes the, the atrocities that is prophesied in the Bible. We see it taking place before us. So there's no reason for us to be blind anymore. If you decide to leave this truth, go back in the world. Like remember what, uh, what's his name, Cypher told in, in, in Matrix? He said, I, I don't want to remember nothing. Put me back to sleep. That's some of y'all. That's some of y'all. You want to go back to sleep. You don't want to remember nothing. You don't want to see Kwan Charles. You don't want to see Breonna Taylor or George Floyd. You don't want to see none of that. And you're going to go back to Sunday school, go right back to sleep, and talk about the love of Jesus, and how all nations come together and hold hands in brotherhood, in kumbaya. You're going to be kumbaya dead. You know, Bishop, I was telling you yesterday, I had a bad, really bad week this week, how my truck broke down, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm in the mechanic shop. My truck is fixing. So I'm, I said, let me work to the store. He come this city out of nowhere. You want to ride? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I'm not getting no. And that thing, and, I, and I'm in the phone with Captain Eriye. Captain Eriye can hear him say that. Captain Eriye is like, hell no. I'm not getting into kind of them. So I'm on my way back now. He come another day mic. You want to ride? I, you know what I said? I said, listen, I'm fat. I need to walk. <laughs> I'm not going to no, know no car with no demi the mic. You lost your mind? Mm-hmm. And this is for some of you. You can my book down. Do, listen, do not get in the car with no demi the mic. Mm-hmm. I know some of you thinking, oh, they look so innocent. Okay. You keep thinking that. They're the devil the Bible speak of. I'm telling you, same thing happened, happened with this Quran, That's what he did. He left home with the Edomite. That's my Edomite friend and his mom. Okay. And I, and I guarantee you his mother's a Christian. Be loyal to Esau. Now look what happened. Lord have mercy. Psalms 91, please. Verse 1. Yep. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is the Bible. Give me that in Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret place of the Most High, we got to dwell in here, is the Bible. We got to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Not places, place. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. The things that's revealed in this Bible, it belongs to us. Go ahead. 
and to our children. And to our children. Don't hide back the truth from your kids. What is wrong with you? Oh, they're not old enough for that yet. Let me, you had these people say, wait till they be, become a teenager, but you didn't wait when you took them to Sunday school, did you? That's right. You didn't wait when you taught them about Christmas, right. about a fat white man coming to give them right. gifts. You didn't wait till they were teenagers. You taught them that garbage as soon as they got out the womb. Now we give you the Bible. You need to wait till they get older. Shut the hell up. The hell is going on here? Was that it, Nehemiah? No, sir. Go ahead. Forever that we may do all the words of this law. Give me an Amos 3 and 7. Wait till they get older. Shut up. And where's the SP? Thank you, Alistair. Where was the SPLC at? The white people that did that. I said, hate group. They call us. Who, who have we done that to? But we're the hate group. You got to be kidding me. Go ahead. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's right. So he's revealing to us the secrets. Because we're the servants, the prophets, or preachers. Prophet and preacher means the same thing. So now we're letting you know. In this time, there's going to be war, famine, tribulation, and plagues. Back to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, verse 1. And some of us are going to get caught up in it. Some, not all. Some of us are, you got to understand how the Lord works. Some of us are, remember we read earlier, it said they that escape the famine can be taken by the sword. The Lord has, um, what's the word? Judgments for each of us. And those of us that perish in his truth, it's not because we're wicked. Give me that in Isaiah 57, I think, in one. Is that what I want? Yeah, because I think a couple of brothers, or maybe two or three, died of corona, if I'm not mistaken. We had two or three. Yeah, one in Georgia, and one I think was from New York. Read that. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. See that? That's what we always got to remember when a brother or sister passes away in this truth. Let that be the first scripture that comes in your mind. Okay, back to Psalm 91, please. Psalm 91, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Read. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Meaning he's our protection. Go ahead. My God, mm -hmm. in him will I trust. We got to trust in what this Bible says. Read. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Meaning the traps that society has set up, the Lord going to show us these traps and we're going to escape out of it. That's what it means. Go ahead. And from the noisome pestilence. A noisome pestilence. Pestilence means plague, disease. That's worldwide. COVID-19 is worldwide. That's a noisome pestilence. Go ahead. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. When it says his truth shall be thy shield and buckler, give me that Psalms 119 about his truth. His truth. Psalms 119 verse 142. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Okay. Real quick, real quick. Let me, let me, let me give an example of that. Give me um, Sirach. 32 about, is it 32 or 38? About food. Y'all know what I want. Bear with me a second. Psalms 37, 29 to 31. Watch this. Yea, thy law is truth. Come on. I'm just giving an example about how God's law is is his truth and how it is our shield and buckler. Read that. Sirach 37, verse 29 to 31. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Unsatiable means greedy. Don't be greedy in any, dainty means sweet. Some of you got a sweet tooth. You go to sleep with, sleep with uh, Snickers bars under your pillowcase. You ain't got to admit it. We can tell by the way you're shaped. That you, you that one. Damn. Don't go to sleep with Snickers bars under your pillowcase. Damn. All them sweets is not leads to diabetes. 
So does two. We got to cut back. If you can't cut, I can't cut it out. Well, then you better cut back. Cut back and burn the fat. Because it's going, it's going to be your shield and buckler. Read that again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 37, verse 29. Be not insatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon me. Nor too greedy upon me. Some of you can't. You have chicken in the morning, chicken in the afternoon, chicken before you go to bed at night. Chicken, 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 chicken. What is wrong with you? Who raised you? Steak, red meat, clogging your arteries. You got high blood pressure now. Yeah, you're putting, you're putting honey on your chicken and syrup to help bobos. Eating bobos. So it says, no, too greedy upon me. God is trying to save our lives. He said, I'm giving you some laws about eating, how to eat to live. But we go, mm, 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 mm. this America. I need some bobos. Give me some bobos. This America. Over in Africa, how many times we ate? Maybe once or twice. Breakfast was like tea. Late, and we didn't have lunch. It was just dinner. And that's most of them over there. They're in decent, good shape. You come to America, everybody's uh, obese. Why? Because we eat five meals a day. All pro GMO. So America sure been good to me. Hey, going back, Bishop. If you, if you, if you brothers and sisters were paying attention, she actually made a statement about the cells and how you continue to feed the cells. So that goes right back to the GMO food. There's cells, that modification in there. You keep feeding yourself the Bobos, the Popeyes. You're only increasing and strengthening those cancer cells inside your body until you're just gone. And, and that's why when the, the COVID, the corona hit, it was all the people that they say with underlying conditions. That mm -hmm. underlying conditions has been the Popeyes going crazy for the chicken and fighting in the damn line to make sure you got a place to get that that Popeye's crack, right. and COVID hit you, and you was done. There's nothing right. you can do about it. Exactly. Go back, Netramite, come on. Verse 30. For excess of meats bring it sickness. God is telling you, why I don't eat too much? He said, the word for me is because. Because excess of meats brings sickness. What don't, what don't black people understand about that? Who raised you? You can't read. You can, hey, you call. Who in here can't read? Look at that. No, one hand. Did he raise his hand back there? Oh, the hell is this? Everybody in this room and online, you can read. The Bible says, for excess of meats brings sickness. It doesn't say maybe. God says too much meat will bring sickness. Go ahead. And surfeiting. And excess. Will turn into cola. Diarrhea. Cola goes into diarrhea sickness. Go ahead. By surfeiting. By excess. Have many perish. Have many drop dead. But he that taketh heed. But he that taketh heed. He that has recovered their sight. Prolongeth his life. Prolongeth his life. Give me that in uh, Sirach 31 20. Start at, start at 19. Ecclesiastic. Ecclesiastic is chapter 31. Start at 18. Verse 18. Start at 17. Verse 17. Leave off first for manner's sake, and be not insatiable, lest thou offend. You offend when you're greedy, brothers and sisters. You know who you is. That's right. I said it is. You know who you be. You offend people. You ever go to somebody's house and they in your fridge? Oh, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. They go there, eat everything out your fridge. Unsatiable. No manners. Go ahead. When thou sittest among many... Reach not thy hand out first of Some all. Some of you got no man. As you say to somebody's house, your hand first. Your hand first. You remember your mom used to smack your hand. Pop! Put that hand out. Get your hand out of, Get your hand out of food. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Meaning what? What does it mean, well nurtured? You came up in the admonition of the Lord. The Lord said, uh, he gave us a dietary law and how much to eat of the dietary law. He's well nurtured. He or she is well nurtured. Go ahead. And he fetcheth not his wind short up on his bed. Talking about gas. Fetcheth not your wind short upon your bed. You always got gas. Oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, God, Jesus. What the hell is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Go to the bathroom. It smells like somebody died in there. Go ahead. Verse 20, 
Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. Uh, uh, Bishop, I had a dream. Can you interpret this? And the dream be as crazy as hell. Did you have chili last night out of the whole bowl? Sit yourself down somewhere. Read it again. <laughs> Verse 20. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. I don't know, but I want a good sleep. Just as moderately eat. You're going to have a good sound sleep. Some of you tossing and turning. Go ahead. He riseth early, and his wits are with him. See that? You can rise up early, and your, your wits is with you. You're, you're sharp early in the morning. You ain't sluggish. Get at home just sluggish, because you ate late and a lot. Go ahead. But the pain of watching. Mm -hmm. Pain and, of worry. And choler. And sickness. And the pangs of the and belly. And pangs of your stomach. Are with an unsatiable man. With, with a greedy person. You're just greedy as hell. Go ahead. Verse 21. And if thou hast been forced to eat... Arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. You know how you go to your mama's house and she make you eat? Yes. Some of you got aunts like to eat. They put a whole thing. And you don't want to offend them. They go, eat, eat. And you eat. The Bible says, if you've been forced to eat, go vomit somewhere. Get that out of you. Okay, go ahead. Verse 22. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. In all thy works be quick. So shall there be, so shall no sickness come unto thee. You see that? Now let's go on back to Psalms 91. And the verse you left off, and read it again about thy shield. Shall, thy truth shall be a shield and buckler. Yes, sir. Psalm 91, verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, mm -hmm. and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth, his law shall be thy shield and buckler, shall be your protection. If we followed, and I just gave a brief example on eating. On eating, if we follow that, we're going to be good through this time. We're going to be good. Okay? We don't. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, mm -hmm. nor for the arrow that flieth by day. The arrow that flieth by day is a missile. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. We're in the time of pestilence. This is the darkness now. Go ahead. Nor for the destruction that wasted that. And God day. is telling the next major thing, next major event during Jacob's trouble is going thermonuclear destruction. War. War like we've never seen it. Read that part again. Verse 6. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth that noonday. Mm -hmm. a, right. th a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come unto thee. See, that, that's the promise God gave us. Y'all see that? That's the promise. So those of us who are alive, when that war hits the United States of America, the Lord says, don't worry, I got you. You're going to be all right. We got to believe that. Ain't no plane you can escape on. Got to Israelites collecting money to buy a plane. What's that plane for? So when the bombs come, we're going to escape. You simple as hell. You know, during a time of war, they shut down all airports. Dummy, the hell is wrong with you? Not unbelief. Read on. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. That's right. Give me Job 20. Job 20. Job 20. We got to make the Lord our habitation. And I hope every IUIC, IUIC school has its pantry stocked to the rim. Don't pigeon shop. Don't pigeon shop. All right. Job 20. Let's start at verse 24. Job chapter 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon. The iron weapon is a missile. Uh, Alicia, can you put me, put me an ICBM up on the screen, please? I want to show them an iron weapon. ICBM. 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 It's easy to spell. There you go. Come on, put it on the screen. Yeah, just grab one. Just grab one. I don't care. Can you get it bigger than that? Why is today you get these little old pictures? Can you get me one that fills the screen? You got it, Alicia? Is it big? All right, just put it on the screen, Alicia. Just put it on the screen. There was a little picture right here. This is the iron weapon that the Bible's talking about. Read it again. That's your mind. Leave it on the screen. Job chapter 20, verse 24. Mm -hmm. He shall flee from the iron weapon, 
And the bow of steel shall strike him through. The bow of steel is the silo that it comes out of. Go ahead. It is drawn. It is drawn. And cometh out of the body. And cometh out of the body. Go ahead. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. The glittering sword is this missile. It cometh out of his gall, his poison. Go ahead. Terrors are upon him. Terrors are upon him. Come on. Verse 26. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. Right. His secret place is going to be them underground bunkers and all that. Go ahead. A fire not blown shall consume him. It says a fire not blown shall consume This fire is going to be thermonuclear fire. Thank you, Alicia. Thermonuclear fire. You ain't got to blow on that. It says a fire not blown shall consume him. Go ahead. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Anyone left down here? Anybody left here is going to go ill with you. Go ahead. The heaven shall reveal his... Yeah, hold on, hold on. Give me that. Give me the precept for that in Revelation 18, 8 through 10. We're coming right back here. We're coming right back. So we were, everybody worried about um, uh, COVID-19, rightfully so, okay, but uh, COVID-19, the economy is uh, crumbling. Hey, Alicia, speaking of the economy, I sent you something about the economy and I forgot to show it. After we read this, just remind me, just remind me. You got that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 18, verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Uh Uh-huh. Death, death and mourning and mourning and famine and famine and she shall be and she shall be utterly burned with fire. America is going to be utterly burned with fire. Come on. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. For strong is the Lord God who judges America. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth mm-hmm. who have committed fornication. That's all these countries that is in bed with America and all her political policies. Go ahead. And live deliciously with they her. They live deliciously because they got paid. They got paid off Africa. They got paid dealing with America. Go ahead. Shall be well her. Uh huh. They all gonna cry when they and, see this place burn. Go ahead. And lament for her mm-hmm. when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse ten, standing afar off, the fear of her torment, saying, "Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, one hour is thy judgment come. Is thy judgment come? Let's go back to Job twenty. Uh, Alicia, I like that one too. I sent you an article um, about um, the economy. I forgot the name of it. I think I sent it to you. Uh, leave that. Don't take that away, Alicia. Give me, look, find me something about the economy. Talk about Joe Biden. Bin Laden, Joe Biden. I don't give a damn. They're all the same. Yes, put that on the screen. Because in the midst of the coronavirus, the economy's having a, a setback. Read that, Alicia, uh, Annette Shemaya. U.S. will see another financial crash if Biden is elected. Go ahead. Go down. Go ahead. The host of RT's Kaiser Report, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herbert, look at Societe General analysis of the impact of quantitative easing on stock and bond markets. The financial services group found that trillions of dollars have been transferred to the top 1% who own the vast majority of stocks and bonds. Mm. If Joe Biden becomes president, he's elected. We are yeah. going to see a repeat of 2008, Max says, referring to the global financial crisis. According to Max, when Barack Obama took office, he didn't know anything about Wall Street because of his constitutional law background. He kind of threw the keys of Wall Street over to Larry Summers and all these other folks. And then they created the global financial crisis. Okay, let's stop that. I just wanted to show you all that in the midst of all this, there's going to be a financial crisis. Go back to Job 20, please. And but Alicia, put that picture back on the screen of, uh, yeah, that one right there. Now, start at verse 24 again. Job chapter 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow. Wait, is- stop. Alicia, I'm, I know I'm speaking English. I said, can you put that on the screen, Alicia, please? Thank you. Thank you. Read it again. Job chapter 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon. This is the iron weapon that Esau is going to flee from, right? And the bow of steel shall strike him through. The bow of steel is the silos like you see at the bottom down there. Right? It's in the earth, right? It is drawn and cometh out of the body. The body right there, the earth. Go ahead. Yea, the glittering sword. This is the glittering sword. This is the glittering sword. Go ahead. Cometh out of his gall. Mm -hmm. Terrors are upon him. Terrors are upon him. Read. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. Mm -hmm. His secret places where it's going to be darkness are those underground bunkers. Go ahead. 
A fire not blown shall consume This him. white man going to be consumed, destroyed. Go ahead. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Anybody left here is going to go ill with them. Death and the ashes. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Read. Verse 27. The heavens shall reveal his iniquity, uh -huh. and the earth shall rise up against him. Read. The increase of his house shall depart, and his good shall flow away in the day of his wrath. See that? Hey, um, read that part again. Verse 28. The increase of his house shall depart. When it talks about the increase of it, America, believe it or not, is the richest country on earth. I don't care about the deficit. I don't care they say America owns or owes trillions of dollars. Listen, that's BS. Revelation 18 says that America, Babylon agree, is the richest country on earth. That's why y'all eat seven meals a day here. That's why obesity reigns supreme in America. It ain't because they poor. You get up all times of night. There's a, 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 a restaurant open somewhere. 24-7. Yeah. Deacon uh, Malachi said, if you want to lose weight, go to Africa. Go to Haiti. There's a food crisis over there. You lose some weight. So the Bible said, <laughs> read that again. Read that again, verse 20, 20, uh, 28. Yes, sir. Verse 28. The increase of his house shall depart. And the his... increase of his house shall depart. All the wealth they've gathered to themselves is going to be gone. Go ahead. And his good shall flow away. And his good shall flow away. Go ahead. In the day of his wrath. In the day of the Lord's wrath. Go ahead. This is the portion of a wicked man. This from... is the portion of a wicked man from God. And the heritage appointed unto him. And the heritage appointed unto him. By God. Go to chapter 5 now. Chapter 5. Watch this. That's his heritage. Y'all not saving America. You ain't saving Becky. You ain't saving Miss Laura or Chuck and Bob. I don't care how nice they are to you. You better use that niceness to your advantage. That And leave it like that and go home. Read that. Job 5 and 12. Job chapter 5 verse 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty. The white man's the crafty. All his laws he established, that he's the crafty man. The Bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty. Go ahead. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Anything there to go, hey, Alicia, do me a favor. Give me back to the dollar bill again. Give me back the dollar bill. It says so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Give me that dollar bill that you had on the screen earlier. I know the IT department is a very unthankful position, but I do thank you, Alicia. Everybody that goes in that position quits after I guess start getting on them. Ask, ask Captain Abiel in New York. He said, I quit. <laughs> Bishop keeps yelling at me. I'm sorry. Zoom in on uh, the left side. Is it, can, can, yeah. can you get one that's not blurry, Alicia? He yelled at me. I'm sorry. I yelled at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a thankless job. Yeah, we're going to change your name to Abiel over there, Alicia. Okay. All right. I'll j just go to the... I can't even see the word. I, wa I wanted to read the words. I can't read it. No, no, he had another one. Find me another one, Alicia. There's another one, a high pixel, pixelated one. Second row? On a, yeah, second one on the second row, right there. How about that one? No, that one, yes, yes, yes. You know what? Alicia might have done that on purpose. You want to yell at me? I'm going to give you some blurry pictures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk, Malachi. There you go. Are we looking for one? No, put it over. Go ahead. Swing it over. So, all right. Okay, you see the top, it says a new coeptus, meaning enterprise of success. Okay, novus ordo seclorum, new world order. Enterprise of success, no. 
their enterprise is not going to be a success. It began at the bottom, it says 1776. Roman numerals, I know it's blurry, but that's the years at the bottom. Uh, Next my read that again, Job 5 and 12, please. Job chapter 5, verse 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. What they're attempting to do, they're going to fail. They want to kill, or what they call it, population control, kill X amount of black people on the earth, they're going to fail. Okay? Uh, and you Israelites that's worried about a chip, don't worry, that's going to fail too. Oh, they're going to put a chip in your brain and you're going to, it's going to make you hate the Lord and you're going to yeah. go against the Bible. That's going, it's going to make you sin. Now it's going to make you sin. Before it was just buying and selling. Yeah. Now it's going to make you sin. We've been tearing them up so bad. Now it's going to, okay. Well, brother, sister, that's going to fail too. So read again, verse 12. Job chapter 5, verse 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Come on. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. The Bible says the Lord going to take them in their own craftiness. Go ahead. And the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. And their counsel is going to be carried headlong. When you trip and go headlong and hit that head, that's death to you. That's death. That's what it means. Go ahead. Verse 14. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. That's right. The same way we groped in the darkness in daytime, the Lord said, I'm going to do that same thing to the, to the enemies. Go ahead. But he saveth the poor from the sword. Bible, see that? But he saveth the poor, meaning the poor in spirit. Give me that. Here's the precept for the poor, Isaiah 14.32. In case you think the poor means somebody ain't got a, a penny in their pocket. And they're talking about that. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 32. What shall one and what sorry? What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion. And the poor of his people shall trust in it. And the poor of his people shall trust in it. Give me Matthew 5 real quick. Verse 3. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. No much. No matter how much money you got, you still poor in spirit. Oprah Winfrey is poor in spirit. Who's another rich one out there? Jay Z is poor in spirit. Tyler Perry is poor in spirit because the spirits ain't right with the Lord. So when it talks about the poor in spirit, it's talking about the poor of God's people. Go back to Job 5. Yes, sir. Job chapter 5, verse 15. But he saveth the poor from the sword, mm -hmm. from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. What so, verse was that? Uh, 15. Go ahead. Verse 16. So the poor hath hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. See, that's so the poor has hope, and iniquity stoppeth her mouth. Go ahead. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. In this truth, we're going to be corrected. And when your day comes, don't turn into a demon. That's going to be your, your, day, your, your day of a trial. Read it again. Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the, the chastening of the Almighty. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Some of you are getting chastised because you got a wicked spouse. That's chastening because you had a backdoor marriage. Now you're getting chastised. Now you're going to court, and she's hitting you with 17%, and you're praying to the Lord, why, Lord, why? And he's going to open your spirit and show you that backdoor rendezvous you had with the big butt sister and she was just looking to hem you up and trap you up because you had a good job because you 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 pronounce you make 60 yeah. grand a year she said gotcha use the one she said that's gonna be my man right there and after she popped that one baby out check you later nigga see you later Boop. now you in court crying you crying you crying where are we at verse 18 sir mm -hmm. Job chapter 5, verse 18. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. Right, the Lord made us sore. He, we had a, like it talked about uh, the bruised. We had a, like Remember Luke 4, we read about the gospel yes. for the bruised. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. Go ahead. He woundeth and his hands make whole. The Lord's going to heal us. That broken heart we got. The bruised spirit and minds we got. He's going to heal us. Go ahead. He shall deliver thee in six trumps. That's the six trumps that we read about in Revelation. 
Yea, in seven there shall no evil When that seventh trump is blown, no evil going to touch us. Because we're going to be out of here. Go ahead. Verse 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. See that? In famine he shall redeem us from death. Go ahead. And in war from the power of the sword. And in war from the power of the sword. Notice famine, death, war, sword. This is what we've been reading about Jacob's trouble. Great tribulation. Go ahead. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Yeah, what the media says about us, what the SPLC, oh, they're a hate group. Oh, they did this. Poor the sister in the London. Look what they did. Not look what they did. Are you kidding me? Not they. One Negro, one wicked Negro did that to our sister. And it's look what they did to her. Are you insane? Read that again. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when he, it cometh. See that? Not, neither shall we be afraid of destruction when it comes. Come on. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. You know why it says at destruction and famine we shall laugh? Give me the precept in Isaiah 65, 13. We're coming right back. We're going to laugh at destruction and famine. Isaiah chapter 65. David said, I've never seen a righteous forsake, forsaken, nor his seed what? Begging bread. begging bread should not be one man woman boy girl in here having to beg bread that's what we all here for everybody understand that yes, read that Isaiah chapter 65 verse 13 therefore thus saith the Lord God behold my servants shall eat but ye shall be hungry you know who's going to be hungry those men and women that rejected this truth those men and women that scoffed this truth those men and women on YouTube and Facebook right now mocking this truth Okay, read it again. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Mm -hmm. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Mm -hmm. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You see, what verse was that? 13. That finished it? Yes, sir. Go on back now, Job 5 and 22 again. Job chapter 5, verse 22. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. This is what we showed from the uh, chattel slavery to the 60s to the way they're using the beast of the earth in their um, diseases. Go ahead. Verse 23. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, mm -hmm. and the beast of the field shall be at peace with thee. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. Talking about in the kingdom. Go ahead. And thou shalt visit thy habitation. And shall not sin. And shall not sin. Come on. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offering, offspring as the grass of the earth. Verse 26. You see that? Thou, thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great. Our children are going to be great, brothers and sisters. Our children are going to be great in this earth. And we got to, that's something they got to hope in. Visualize it, hope in it, and believe that thing. Go ahead. Verse 26, thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age. And that grave, what it's talking about, is something heavy in that. That's for another day, another lesson. Go ahead. The grave you're thinking about ain't the grave it's talking about. Go ahead. Like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Mm -hmm, he's transformed. Go ahead. <laughs> Lo, this. We have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. Give me Daniel 12 and 1. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Read. And at that time, and shall, at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince will stand it for the children of thy people. So the archangel Michael stands for the children of Israel. Notice what it says. I want you to see the wording. Will stand it for the children of thy people. Who's he speaking to? Daniel. Daniel was an Israelite. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble. And this is time of trouble. So okay, just, we just read that earlier in Jeremiah 30 and 7, Jacob's trouble. It's called uh, Great Tribulation in Revelation 7. Go ahead. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. So, you know, guess what? That ain't talking about disease because there's always been disease on earth. That ain't talking so much about uh, famine. There's been famines on the earth. This ain't the only time. Uh, war. There's been wars on the earth. So what is this talking about? This is talking about what we read in Psalms 91, where it said, um, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. 
This is talking about Revelation 18, where we read 8 through 10, about America shall be destroyed in one hour with fire. This is talking about 2 Peter 3.10. Remember, it said, the, give me that 2 Peter 3.10 so we can see it. Actually, give me the one in Zechariah first. You know what I want, Nehemiah? 14, around there. So you can see, so you can see. Daniel's talking about something that never happened on the earth before. Read that. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Mm. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. You got to think about it. What can take your flesh from your body while you're standing on your feet? Thermal nuclear war. That's what it's talking about. Read it again. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass that in that it? day. Is that all I want? Yes, sir. Gonna go back real quick to Job 20 because I know some of y'all forgot. What verse were we read in Job 20 about the iron weapon? Verse 24? Because I know some of y'all forgot already. Job chapter 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. That's an ICBM missile, intercontinental ballistic missile. Go back to Daniel 12 and 1 now. Now we got the thought. Now we got the thought. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Second Peter 3.10. I forgot that one. Oh, you got that? Put that on the screen, Alicia. You all right, Alicia. I don't care what they say about you. Put that on the screen. That's what we just read in Zechariah 14. Let's get a Lord a hand on that thing. When that happened, it's time to go home. Let's go to 2 Peter 3.10. Then we're going back to uh, Daniel 12. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and, and the element shall <laughs> melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. We, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You see verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? The men and women that leave this truth, they don't believe this. They don't. They obviously, they can't believe this. If, you're, if you read this and then you decide, you know what? I'm going to leave and I'm going to curse everybody out. You don't believe the Bible. Read. Verse 12. So in all holy conversation, watch, let your speech be upon God's laws. 
Let your speech be the testimonies and the laws of the Most High God. Then it says, and godliness, let your, your conduct be that of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Why do we look for and hasten for that? Because that means we're going home. Go ahead. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Do you realize that there's no Christian, there's no Christian that looks for and hastens for the coming of the day of the Lord. Not one. Not one. They all talk about, they want America right. to stay. God bless America. Are you kidding me? No. This place is damned. And we want to go home. Ain't nobody got time for that staying around here. Getting shot in the street and kicked, hit upside the head with watermelon. Yeah, they vote y'all. Some of y'all just voted for a new pharaoh. Some of y'all sitting in here too. Think no, 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 think no, don't nobody know. Going back, Netshamai, where was you at? Uh, you wanted to go to Daniel 12. Daniel 12 and 1. That was it. Yes, sir. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. What does that mean, Michael going to stand up for us? Watch this. Go to Matthew 24. And 24 and 29. What does it mean, Michael the great prince shall stand up for us? Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from the heavens. Talking about the missiles, go ahead. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. There's going to be war on earth, go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man. Then you're going to see the sign of Christ come. You're gonna, they're going to be like as birds flying like it says in Isaiah, go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. We all going to cry on that day, read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven mm -hmm. with power and great glory. That's right, come on. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. That's Michael, the great prince, right there. When it says he shall send his angels. Read that part again. What verse is that? Verse 31. Mm-hmm. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And what are they going to do? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Let's go back to Daniel 12 and 1. Daniel, I don't see why the seven-day events is getting mixed up between Christ and Michael. What, who raised you? What is wrong with you? Read that again. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. He don't stand for everybody. He's only standing for the Israelites. Can somebody tell a Christian that? Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. See that? You see that part right there? And it's going to be a time of trouble such as never was from the, from the, from the, read that part again. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was. Such as never was. Go ahead. Since there was a nation. Since there was a nation. Even to that same time. So this is talking about thermonuclear proliferation. Did I pronounce that word right? Proliferation. proliferation. That's the word. Proliferation. Everybody understand that? That's what that's talking about. Come on. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. See that? And at that time, thy people. People shall be delivered. Not all nations on the earth that believe in white Jesus. Thy people are the Israelites. Go ahead. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. The ones found written in the book are those that endure to the end. Those that gave their lives and testimony for the laws and commandments. Not those men and women that said, that gave the, this truth the finger and said, I'm telling the truth. I just hate y'all. I, mm -mm. no, 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 no. You failed the test. Read. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So don't worry about the men and women in this truth that die. That's what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead, read that again. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life. That's what 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 is talking about. The dead in Christ shall rise first. That's what it means. Some to everlasting life. Now watch this next part. 
and some to shame and everlasting contempt. But some people are going to be raised up just to be put to death again. Go ahead. Verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. So you men and women that's putting your brick in in, this, in whatever capacity it is. The Bible says, it says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. That's men and women. Okay, read. And they that turn many to righteousness. And they that turn many to right. That's men and women. That's why I'm saying, I'm stressing it. Cause I know some of you says, I don't turn nobody to righteousness. Stop it. Yes, you do. The way you speak, the way you conduct yourself, the Titus 2 uh, meetings that y'all have. The, now that you got the radio program, sisters on there, there's a lot y'all doing. Don't underestimate yourself. Read that again. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Come on. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words. Shut up the meanings of this book. Go ahead. And seal the book. Seal this book from understanding. When? Even to the time of the end. Now it's opening up. to. Now we know that we're in the end time. That's how we know we're in the end time. Go ahead. Many shall run to and fro. Yeah, many running to and fro trying to find and understand what the Bible talking about. I know them niggas ain't got the truth. So what do white men say over here? Let me go over here to Rome. What the, what the Pope got to say? You simple as hell. Many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall be increased. That's why you got all these new technologies and understanding coming out. From there, from there. We're almost done. We're almost in Psalms. My favorite Psalm. Psalm 18 and 3. Psalm 18, verse 3. So this is don't worry about Jacob's trouble. Don't worry. Read. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. See that? So we got to call upon the Lord because only he's worthy to be praised. Go ahead. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The purpose of calling on the Lord is to be saved from your enemies. Can somebody tell the church that? What you calling the Lord for? Oh, I can't pay my bills. You stupid as hell. Read. The sorrows of death come past me. See what it says? The sorrows of death come past me. Go ahead. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. And the floods of ungodly You got ungodly men coming from within the truth without. You got ungodly men all around us. Go ahead. Verse 5. The sorrows of hell come past me about. Read. The snares of death prevented. Mm -hmm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. So when we get distressed, the Bible tells us to call upon the Lord. Come on. And cried unto my God. Read. And he heard my voice. He heard my voice. Out of his temple. Uh -huh. And my cry came before him. Even into his ear. See that? When this day of trouble that we read about in Daniel 12 and 1. When this day of trouble comes that we read about in 2 Peter 3 and 10. When this day of trouble comes that we read about in Zechariah 14. When this day of trouble comes that we read about in Psalms 91 and Job 20. When this day of trouble comes. Read that part again. When... Stay with me, man. Come on, man. Yes, sir. You broke the in, flow. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried upon my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ear. And what's going to happen on that day? Go ahead. Then the earth shook and trembled. You're going to feel the earth shake and tremble on that day when we cry on the Lord. Go ahead. The foundations also of the hills moved. The foundations of this whole earth going to move out this way. Go ahead. And were shaken. Going to be shaken. Read. Because he was wroth. He was mad. Go ahead. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Mm -hmm. Coals were kindled by it. Read. He bowed the heavens also and came down. See that? He bowed the heavens also and came. That's what we read in Matthew 24. Then you shall see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. With the host of angels. And read that again, Nehemiah. There went a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. That's the part we want right there. He bowed the heavens also and came down. This didn't happen during the time of David. This is going to happen in these later last days. Read. And darkness was under his feet. And darkness was under his feet. Read. And he rode upon a cherub mm. and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. That's what we read in Matthew. Didn't we just read that in Matthew 24? Go ahead. Verse 11. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Mm -hmm. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed. Hailstones and coals of fire. Read. Verse, verse 13. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. 
hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. That's the missiles that we've been reading about all day. Go ahead. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen. You're going to see the, the oceans spread open. You're going to see the channels, the ground beneath it. Go ahead. And the foundations of the world were discovered at thy uh -huh. rebuke. Read. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. See that? He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Go back to Matthew 24. We just read that. The part where it said he shall give the angels uh, charge over thee. Read that part. Uh, what verse is it? Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Let me hear it. And he shall send his angels. That's with a, it right there. Go ahead. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Go back to Psalms 18. Look at this again. Verse 17. Psalms 18, 17. Psalm 18, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. See that? That's why we got to be delivered from the enemy. Our enemy's too strong for us. You got a man you're trying to fight who has bio... Bio... bio give me the word. Give me the word. Biochemical weapons. What you going to do about that? He'll create a disease and kill us all. How are we going to fight that? Your gun can't do it, brothers. Your fist, I don't care how good you can box, you can't fight disease. Okay? Germ warfare. You can't fight that thing. Read that again, that's your mind. I want that part. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Why? For they were too strong for me. They're too strong for us. And these weak bodies, they're too strong for us. Revelation 7 9, please. We're almost done. Revelation 7 9. We're going to go on the street and march and we're going to fight. <laughs> you simple as hell. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Read. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. This great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and people, are the Israelites that were scattered from the time of slavery in all uh, countries and nations and people. Give me the precept, Deuteronomy 4, 27. Christians are stupid as hell. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Do you realize that in Christianity, black people don't exist? Don't exist. We don't exist in Christian theology. Understand that thing. They are quick to say all nations before they admit mm -hmm. black people what, what they did to us yeah. and reward we're going to get for what you did to us. No, no, we don't want to talk about that. You don't exist in our world. Read that, Nehemiah. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither mm -hmm. the Lord shall lead you. Do y'all see? That's the prophecy. Going back. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with Wait, a give me 2nd Ezra 242. Second Ezra is chapter 2, verse 42. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. See that part? I saw upon the Mount Sion. That's Israelites right there. Everybody see that? Does everybody see that? All right, let's go on back now. Revelation 7, please, in verse 10. Revelation chapter 7, verse 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and up and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom 
and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Read. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they which came out of great tribulation. That we, were, we came out of the sword, out of famine, out of, uh, help me out here, pestilence, disease, financial crisis. We came out of all that. Thermal nuclear war, we came out of that. That's the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. Everybody see that? Read. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Go to Jeremiah 30 and 7. We're going to close out after this. Jeremiah 30 and 7. We're going to go down. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of See it. See that God has promised. We're going to be saved. Now notice it says, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. I want that first part. Notice it says, for that day is great so that none is like it. Daniel 12 and 1 use the same wording. This is going to be like any, no other uh, captivity. Read. Verse 8. Come for on, man. Sir. Come on. For it, for it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck mm -hmm. and will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves. See, them. remember, remember Luke 4 about the, the good news? To, I can't quote him. Param, set the captive free, free. Set us free. That's how you say it in 80. Free. F-W-E-E. Free. Set us free. So, that, is that what it said in Luke 4? Find it for us, because you know, I'll, I'll butcher a scripture. I, uh, what it said? Yeah. It says to preach deliverance to the captives. It says preach deliverance to the captives. Go ahead. And recovering of sight to the blind. Now we can see. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. bruised. So now, going back now. Jeremiah 30 and 8. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Jeremiah. This is what it's talking about. Read. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. You know what that stranger, white man, Chinese and Arabs, they no more going to serve themselves on us. Because right now, everything we thought we had, they take from us. Read. But they, they shall serve the Lord their God. And David, their king. Now, that's a twofold. That David, their king, goes into the covenant that the Lord gave David, that Christ will sit on the throne forever. And guess what? David going to be back, too. Go on ahead now. Go ahead. <laughs> Whom I will raise up unto them. Read. Verse 10. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. So this is our mindset during this time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible says, therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. Read. Saith the Lord. Read. Neither be dismayed. Don't be dismayed. Don't be scared. Don't worry. Come on. O Israel. Come on. O Israel. Go ahead. For lo, I will save thee from so afar. So being saved ain't for all nations. The Bible says, fear thou not, or be not dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee. I will save thee from afar. Not I will save all races on earth. It says Israel. Go ahead. Proven that the Israelites are scattered worldwide. Twelve tribes worldwide. Go ahead. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. Uh-huh. See that? The Israel's going to be in captivity when the Lord returns. Go ahead. And Jacob shall return mm -hmm. and shall be in rest. We're going to be in rest. That's the kingdom. Go ahead. And be quiet. And we're going to be silent and quiet. Go ahead. And none shall make him Nobody afraid. Nobody ever going to make us afraid again. Go ahead. For I am with thee. The Lord going to be Lord. with us, saith the Lord. Come on. To save thee. He's going to save us. Go ahead. Though I make a full end of all nations. The Bible says he's going to make a full end of all nations. Not one or two. All nations. Go ahead. Whither I scattered thee. Mm -hmm. Yet will I not make a full end of thee. He said he ain't going to make a full end of us, the Israelites. Go ahead. But I will correct thee in measure. The Lord said, but I'm going to correct y'all in measure. Go ahead. And will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So we're not going to be. That's what we're going through now. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord. Thy bruise is incurable. Didn't we just read in the gospel about the, the bruise, the, the, the last part, Luke 4? You read it. What did it say about the bruise? 
Was it? Somebody help me. It says some other. Yeah, he got the cricket sound tag. <sighs> to set at liberty them that are bruised. That's it. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Now go back to verse 12 in Jeremiah 30. Thank you. Verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable. So we're the bruised people. So the gospel's for us. Write that down. Write that down. Go ahead. And thy wound is grievous. Mm -hmm. There is none to plead thy cause. There's nobody that pleads for us as a race, as a people, as a nation. Go ahead. That thou, that thou mayest be bound up. Right. Thou hast no healing medicine. There's no healing medicine for the nation. Read. Verse 14. All thy lovers. Meaning have, all the nations around. Go ahead. Have forgotten thee. Mm -hmm. They seek thee not. Nobody gives a daggone about us. Go ahead. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. That's what slavery is all about. Go ahead. With the chastisement of a cruel That one. white man is the cruel one. Go ahead. For the multitude of thine iniquity. Because thy sins were increased. Because our sins were increased. Come on. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Why are you in the street marching and crying all day long? Go ahead. Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. It ain't going to stop. It's going to keep happening until we repent as a people. Go ahead. Because thy sins were increased. Our sins are increased. I now we march for gay rights, LGBTQR. We just increase more and more and more. You got sisters in here talking about I used to be a lesbian. And, 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 and I, if I get married, I'm not sure if I want to give my husband no sex. You men are stupid as hell you marry that woman. You simp. Don't marry no lesbian. And you sisters be mindful. Don't marry no homosexual. You don't got what he want. Where we at? Verse 15. Then he gonna give you hell. You gonna marry, you know what I'm talking about. The lesbian woman gonna give the brother, I said divorce that hoe. Get rid of, kick her to the curb. Make get the hell out of here. But she might take me to child's, well you shouldn't have laid down with her. We tell you, if they come out of there, you better give them at least five years. Right. And they got to be proven. Before you go, well, she's so pretty. Now you're catching hell. Oh, you got S on your forehead. Yeah, you got S on your forehead now. She talking about you ain't getting none now and you ain't getting none later either. Because you ain't got what she want. Rug muncher. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> come on now. Verse 15. Go ahead and do a video about that and hate me. I don't give a damn. Where we at? Verse <laughs> Verse 15, sir. Go ahead. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable. For you know, I sent, I sent a sister over. I said, hey, do me a favor. Can you counsel a sister right there? Within five minutes, the sister ran back. I can't counsel her. <laughs> Y'all got to handle that. This girl is crazy. She all between women's legs. She's something wrong with the girl. And you simp brothers sit around simping. The hell is wrong with you? I'm sorry. Simp brother sympathy. Where we at? Verse, verse Simp 15, sir. Go ahead. Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. Because thy sins were increased. Thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Remember, we was it was it Alabama or, no, or, or what's um, Captain Mattathias? I think it's over there at his school. Tallahassee. I don't know if it was there. I might be wrong. There was two girls. That was always with each other. I didn't think nothing at first. I thought, you know, women, sometimes they hold hands. They kiss each other. And she, we see them. And we don't, yeah, we don't think, right, we don't think nothing of, of it. But we notice a pattern. Sisters is talking. And this one girl is just un uncomfortably too close. And I'm looking. I'm like, I, there's something going on. I call the brother. I said, what's going on with these two sisters? You know? He says, oh, they used to be in that life. I said, really? Separate them. Call them up here. The hell is this? And that's when you blast them, right? I think it was you. There were women and some of these women, they ran, and they know that we're used to seeing women around each other holding hands or kissing. We don't think nothing evil right away. But there's a spirit. There's a spirit. I don't know why I brought that up. Somebody in here might be battling. Where we at? Verse 16, sir. Go ahead. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all these nations that devour us going to be devoured. Go ahead. And all thine adversaries. All our adversaries. adversaries. Read it right. And all thine adversaries. Thank you. Every one of them. Every one of them. Not some of them. It says every one of them. If you can think of an adversary, every one of them. Go ahead. 
shall go into captivity. They're all going into captivity. They're all going into slavery. You ain't saying it's gonna load a hand on that thing. We don't give a damn. That's that's therapy. That's therapy right now. That's better than laying on some white man couch talking about tell me what happened when you was five. To hell with that. You going into slavery. Hey, Bishop, you got to read that again. Yeah, read that again. I'm good. Now, get off the couch, but I'm good now. That scripture just, just did something to me. Read that. Read that again. Verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Even the nice lady, Judy, what was her name? Makovitz? Yeah. Yes, her too. She admitted to creating these viruses that killed a lot of our people. She going into captivity too. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. All these nations that robbed us, they're going to be a spoil. Go ahead. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. That's right. Come on. Verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Go ahead. Because they called thee an outcast. They called us outcasts. We ain't no damn good. You Negroes, you, you Latinos, you are outcasts. Go ahead. Saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. This is Zion, who nobody gives a hoot about. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. Meaning he's going to bring us back to the kingdom. Go ahead. And have mercy on his dwelling He's going to have places. mercy on our dwelling places. Go ahead. And the city shall be builded upon her own heat. Mm -hmm. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Go ahead. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. We. Oui. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. That's right. We're going to have a whole lot of babies. We're going to have so many babies. We're going to have a, it said a small one shall be a nation. Because women are going to have babies at four months. Babies going to be delivered. We went, over, we went over that a couple of weeks ago. Go ahead. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. We ain't going to be small. Go ahead. Verse 20. Their children also shall be as, for, as aforetime. Mm. Our children are also going to be as aforetime. Go ahead. And their congregation shall be established before me. Mm -hmm. And I will punish all that oppress them. God said he's going to punish all that oppress us. Let's get a Lord a hand for that. You men and women, let's say what we just went over. So everybody say aye. aye. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. That's it. We out of here. Shalom. Elisha, you got any announcement? You say yes? Put, can you put both that I sent you uh, side by side? Is that possible? Praises. All praises. All praises to the Most High God. We have reached 100,000 subscribers. That's right. All praises. But I want to stress something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, should, we shouldn't be complacent. You know, what we see it up here is that's not enough. So there is a charge to you sisters. You sisters a lot of times ask, how can you put your brick in? Well, guess what? Here's a way for you to put your brick in. By sharing all of this content. By sharing and asking family members, friends, so on and so forth. Brothers and sisters who may have not subscribed to the pages, like uh, IUIC in the classroom, IUIC events, IUIC in the classroom too. Those three mainly, IUIC in the classroom, IUIC in the classroom too, T-W-O, and IUIC events. 
You should be sharing all of this content so that it reaches as many people as possible. That's a way to put your brick in. There are some of you who may not even be on social media. Well, guess what? This can be a reason for you to get social media solely to push the truth. Add your, 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 your wicked family members to your page. Add all your, you know, not your coworkers. You might get fired. But add those who you can to the page in order to spread the gospel. Tell them to like, to comment, to subscribe so that we can drive the viewership up, that we can reach by next week, let's reach 200,000 uh, subscribers. Listen, we Israel, we, it can be done. So here's a way for you sisters to put your brick in. Sisters, y'all gonna put your brick in? I can't hear you. I said, I can't hear you. <laughs> All praises to the most high. Anything else you like, sir? You say what you say? All right. Bruh. Make sure you pull up at that other one, too. The one above that, Officer uh, Alicia. Uh, right there, yeah. A couple of, in the meantime, a couple of name change announcements. A brother in Haiti changed his name to Uriel what? Levi Ben Israel. Oh, praises. Deacon Laba, you heard that? Uh -oh. Deacon Laba? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Deacon Laba, you heard that? Uh-oh, mes amis. Sac passe. Also, in Birmingham, Alabama, Sister Mary Magdalene, is, Israel, is no longer a Greek. Oh, praises. I think there was one more. Okay, I think I think I thought somebody sent me another one. Hold on, brothers, get ready. Uh, sister's going to ask for an allowance uh, so that they don't pigeon shop. So just get ready right, for it. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, you don't. You want me to shop, right? I need money. Okay, I, I think that was it. Are right, you Lasha? You done? All right. Real quick, Officer David in Jamaica is no longer a Greek. Wow. 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 My wow. That's my brother right there, man. You pull that up, Alicia? Okay, uh, can you enlarge the one on the left first? Oh, I'm sorry, one more. Okay. Uh, the house of Officer Azariah in Austin are no longer Greeks. All these name changes coming through now. Soldier Esdras in Barbados is no longer a Greek. Wow. So what's wrong with, we got all the resources I, here and the brothers here is like slow. Oh no. Tag. Damn. I want to say something, but. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. This, all praises, a lot of name changes. Officer Asher. Yaakov has also changed his name from Trinidad. Thank you. you hear that, Deacon Abiel? You heard that? <sighs> hey, Benji, you're on one, man. De Actually, I got a message from Deacon Abiel. He said, please announce my name change, too. <laughs> Can we get that cricket sound, please? <laughs> Cap, Cap, go ahead. Check, check. Yes, sir. Uh, Alicia, can you pull up at one about the career talk? Okay.
Okay, all right, so um, I was talking to Captain Yashua and uh, got the approval for this. Uh, we're gonna, we'll have it on Zoom, but what we're gonna do is to try to help out some, uh, especially some of these younger brothers and sisters coming into the truth. Uh, I don't know about y'all, some of y'all, I went to college and it really wasn't no help as far as career. They just put you in classes to pass you and send you out the door while Esau's, Esau's getting uh, shadowing opportunities and things of that nature. They go out of college making a damn $80,000 job. They prepared, right. Uh, so what we're going to do here with IUIC Career Talk, uh, we are going to have uh, either bi-weekly or, or uh, monthly career talks um, where we'll, we'll go over different careers that some of you brothers and sisters may have um, and we're going to uh, expound the horizon of some of these brothers in here uh, for careers because a nation needs doctors, they need lawyers, tax uh, uh, preparers, all type of stuff, right? Um, so we're going to start this very soon. So pull up the email one more time, I mean the uh, picture. So if you have a career, uh, I'm not talking about a job you just started, but like a career, email iuic.careertalk at gmail.com. This is another way you was talking about putting your brick in, sisters, brothers. Uh, move, go to the next one. In the email, this is what you should put. Your name, your career, length in career, and phone number. And what we'll do is we'll go through the um, inquiries that we get and we'll reach out to you. We'll set up that schedule. Um, so you all can tune in and uh, expand your horizons to things that you may not have thought of or you were interested in. Now you get to speak to one of your own people and they can tell you how it really is. Because Esau tries to confuse you on them damn uh, um, job requirements with big words and all you're doing is damn looking at a computer screen. We're going to give you the real thing, all right? So that'll be coming soon. Just stay tuned for it. But email us at one more time. Pull up the email for us. The image. IUIC.careertalk at gmail.com. It'll be an hour career talk bi weekly or uh, once a month. All right? That's it. All right, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Uh, we want to thank Captain, Captain Dakar, Dakar for coming up. Thank you. Uh, Captain Severus also is here. We got Captain Gad, he drove all the way from Colorado. No, he fly out of here. But good to see you, Captain Gad. Uh, some of you know Captain Gad moved to Denver. Oh, boy, he's from Miami. Uh, who else we got? That's it? Oh, no, I say Captain Severs. One more announcement. Z Diddy of the South, man. Announce, announce it, bro. All right. Uh, so uh, the long-awaited debut is almost over here. A round of applause for the Most High, giving us this righteous music, these modern-day songs that we got from the brothers from Mississippi Camp Sons of Thunder. It's dropping November 22nd, right? You already see it. That debut album of it, the Seventh Trumpet. The seventh trumpet. So uh, be prepared for that. It'll be on uh, see Spotify, Apple Music. You can download it, listen to it on your phone, and uh, ride around with some righteous music instead of this worldly, God, ungodly, forsaken music. All right? November 22nd. Sons of Thunder. All right. Anything else, officer, Alicia? All right, let's go ahead and break bread, brothers and sisters. Hey, real quick. Um, keep Sister Leah from Boston in your prayers. She's fighting cancer right now. All right? Says so the doctor sent her home with, with bad news. I'll say that. But we know we serve the almighty God of heaven and earth. So be sure to keep our sister in your prayer. That's Sister Leah from the uh, IUIC Boston camp, all right? All right, let's break bread. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he, he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Men of Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Faith, patient, salvation. The truth. Faith, patient, salvation. The truth. Faith, patient, salvation. The truth. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the power is might. It's what? 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 